Listening frequencies are open. Welcome to Shield of Tomorrow, our Star Trek RPG here on Geek and Sundry Twitch. I'm grinning because right before cameras went live, I was uh, antagonizing Sam. You were <laughs> and antagonizing several people. I was antagonizing several people. I was I was getting Sam aggro. I was just <laughs> uh, a couple of announcements. So we're just going to go ahead and jump right in. Um, uh, so real quick, the big news. Uh, just give everybody a heads up. Uh, Shield of Tomorrow is moving to Monday nights after tonight. This is our last Wednesday night show, um, 9.30 to 12.30 usually, but now we're moving to Monday nights, so we will be 7 to 10, and possibly a little later if the crew likes us, it'll be up to them. Um, but at least it won't be past midnight, for God's sakes. And that means only five more days to the next episode instead of a whole week. That's true, Yay. yes, because we'll be back Monday, so See? this is going to be like a double uh, like a, a double threat. But I will say um, it, it also means that since we're kind of following a 12 episode arc tonight is kind of like a season finale Ooh. middle before we pick up the next arc of shield of tomorrow so uh so tonight will be a pretty interesting episode i must say um, other announcement we have to make at the top of the episode tonight is we are having another code giveaway. So we finally got Woo! our codes. Yeah, we got our codes uh, from the folks over at uh, Cryptic, and they are hooking us up with Star Trek Online uh, code giveaways uh, for the Temporal Agent uh, pack, uh, which is pretty rad. So stay, stay in chat. Uh, during the break and we're going to give those out and don't worry if you're on alpha or if you're just watching and, and are looking around on Twitter we're going to set the giveaway up so that you can get your codes you have a shot at getting the codes wherever you're at so yeah that yeah. stuff um, <clears throat> let's see um, oh we don't have a date for it yet but we are planning on doing we're hoping to do our next play along on Star Trek Online in October so that's coming up it'll be this coming month where we will once again embark on shenanigans and blowing stuff up in the name of peace. Um, so, uh, we will <laughs> many things will have first contact with our torpedoes. That's basically and, what Star Trek is. You just summed it up. We're yes. gonna have a lot of fun blowing stuff up gonna, for peace. In the name of peace, we're gonna we're gonna pay homage to General Order One by annihilating everything we come across. <laughs> it can encounter us can if we destroy it from far away. It doesn't exist anymore. That's right. All right. And, this is so dark. Uh, and uh, on that note, I want to give a special thanks to Anovos again, as always. They just released uh, for pre-order. Not only did they do a pre-order for the Darmok jacket, which was very recent, but of course, I think it was yesterday, the day before yesterday, they announced the uh, pre-order for the new Discovery uniforms. I did not see that. Oh, mm -hmm. dang. Yes. Yeah, Please ordered it. Game go an order. I already ordered mine. That's a game changer. I ordered it immediately. Mm. I was, it's so, it was so difficult. I really wanted to get a science uniform. Um, but they're doing their pre-order. Um, I ended up getting command because I almost never because in like video games and, and RPG stuff, I almost never play command. I always play like science or engineering. Um, Shiv, baby. Um, so uh, they're they're from what I understand, they're having like a special in their pre-orders right now. They're they're like discounted a little bit if you pre-order now. They only just launched, so check that out. Hey, real um, quick about that. Yeah, uh, I've heard some conflicting reports. We heard a rumor that. There was a Shield of Tomorrow reference in Star okay, Trek Okay, let's Discovery. address the Shield of Tomorrow yeah, let's reference. Let's address this, because I didn't hear it, but I wasn't super paying attention on that on that moment when they were throwing out the ship names, yeah. and I'm an idiot, and I should have been listening. But yes. then people, some people were like, definitely said, USS Sally Ride. The USS Ride USS shows Ride. So, up. Here's 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 like, the no, odyssey of it's, our reference in uh, Star Trek Discovery. <laughs> um, uh, so... We, we first caught wind from our good friend Jackson, our fellow space lord, um, who uh, basically, uh, he got to see, uh, along with Eliza, got to see an advanced showing of Discovery, and they heard the name Ride referenced when they I were- I didn't hear it during the show. Yeah. First it's showing. So it's I listened fast. for it yeah. when it premiered. I was watching, I listened for it, and I heard it. Now, a fan in the UK said they were watching it with captions, and it was actually the USS Rye, R-Y-E. But, yeah. oh. but Go ahead, Sam. It's memory alpha. Thank you. Yeah. The next day, when it was fully <laughs> updated, mm -hmm. it was the USS Ride. Which leads me to believe that it was just a mistake in the captions, yeah. that yeah. it actually yeah. is the USS captions. Ride. Now, yeah, the other things the they said included the Edison and the Jaeger. So Which it means that they were, that they, yes. like us, had the idea of who an awesome person to name a ship after would yes. be. But still, but still, alpha. it is kind of cool. Yeah. It is kind of cool. And yeah. also, it's worth noting that in a... Uh, 
TOS novel, there is a USS Ride referenced that's around in 2269, which is, I believe, 13 mm. years after. So it would be roughly contemporaneous that be, to that. That would be just after the Kirk era. No, that would be just at the start of the Kirk era in the original uh, series, like what you were saying. So yeah. After. It is possible that it's related to that. However, Head cannons exist. <laughs> Therefore, it's totally us, y'all. And we've been getting a question: Would this be then seven four seven one zero? I believe is the registry of the USS Sally Ride. Um, would that make it the A? And as this debate was going on on Twitter, uh, someone very rightly pointed out that you only receive a letter at the end of the registry if previous incarnations of the vessel also shared the exact same registry. <laughs> so in the case of the in case of the Enterprise, NCC one seven zero one kept going A B C and D because they kept the registry all the way through um, which is like an honorific like they do that to honor the ship itself so uh, in this case it's uh, Sally Ride's got her own yeah. registry we didn't get a letter we got a Sally yeah you got you got the Sally yeah, Ride yeah. we're not even done with our announcements but that was a fun debate yeah. uh uh, mentioned Tales from the Loop playtest October 6th. Gee, what is that is all about? Um, yes, so on October 6th, um, uh, I can announce... Uh, Amy, are you going to be there for that? You're not there for that, right? But Correct. But Gina is going to be there for that. So we're doing a playtest. Um, I'm going to be playing, which will be a nice change, but we're doing a playtest of one of the coolest freaking new RPGs that Modiphius has had a hand in publishing. Um, from uh, Yeah, it's, it's called Tales from the Loop. Yeah, and it's so much fun. It's, it's really fun. Yeah, it's basically, it's it's role-playing in the 80s that never was, is the way they stage it. And it's basically exactly. X-Files meets the Stranger, Stranger Things. And we all play kids, uh, ages yeah. uh, uh, 10 to 15, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. in a town where a particle accelerator has been built underneath the city and weird things start happening. So, um, Wait, are we playing this? Are we playing this? Yeah. Or you, you're playing this? I'm playing this. Oh. this my turn. I'm, I'm playing. And Gina's playing. Yeah. <laughs> Gina's, Gina's gets played too. So we're going to be doing it on October 6th. Um, and one of our good friends of the channel, uh, Kelly, uh, Kelly Dean. Is that how you say her last name? D'Angelo? Kelly Land. Yeah, Kelly yes, Kelly Land. Yeah, she's going to be running the game. She's um, a kick ass DM. She is a kick ass yeah, DM. Um, so, wait, Amy's basically, you're a paper girl, right? That's what you're, that's what you're playing as, a paper girl? I well, kind of, in, yeah. the, okay, in the cool, play cool, test, cool, yeah. Um, I also, my, my girlfriend Rachel Seeley will be at the table, so that'll be interesting. <laughs> um, so <laughs> so we'll, we'll see how that goes. I know Matt and Marisha are able to actually, you know, they, they've, got a, they've got a system down. Hopefully I won't, uh, hopefully I won't uh, endanger myself. So, um, uh, so the, next, he, the next thing I have to announce, uh, this isn't really a big announcement, but I just thought this was cool as hell. I know we're kind of dragging on the announcements tonight, but uh, there was a gravitational wave from a black hole collision 1.8 billion light years away that was detected today in both Italy and in here in the US. And this is the fourth time in the past year this has happened. Yeah. And it's a huge deal. Um, uh, as first this question, are we going to die? Yeah. No. Oh, you will oh, yeah. eventually. Yeah, Neil deGrasse Tyson because should just it. sail in here right yep. now and be like, yes, eventually the sun will swell to a red giant, devour half okay. the solar okay. system, oh, okay. and okay. we will be we'll just... Be we'll, we'll be dead. Yeah. yeah. It, it, that, the good news is, is that'll happen before Andromeda collides with the Milky Way, oh, although yeah. they say... Anyway, um, that's, that's the, the actual yeah. other galaxy, not the video game. That already happened. Yeah, um, like this, this is the fourth time in the past year, so the reason why this is kind of a big deal is this is going to go a long way to helping us understand how these waves interact with space-time. It also further proves Einstein was correct. Right? Y'all, we get to be alive during the time where that stuff got seen for the first time. Gravitational oh. waves from a black hole that have been traveling through space at the speed of light for 1.8 billion years collided with Earth this week. <laughs> yeah. Just let that sink in. We think well, we're playing a sci-fi like game, that. but the truth of the matter is... This is real life. <laughs> yeah. Is this real life? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you Pretty guys. nuts. Uh, so Science. my last, my final announcement tonight is I want to wish a wonderful heartfelt, loving, happy anniversary to Team Human. Because today is the third anniversary of Team Human, um, and just wanted to send all the love out to Team Human and everything that they do. This whole community has been incredible. It's just great. I love you guys. Um, thanks for letting us be a part of the community and having us, and yeah, hey guys. Raccoon love. All right. Um, that's it for me. Does anybody have any other announcements before we jump in? Yes. Happy belated birthday, Hector. Yay! Don't wish much. him a happy birthday. He has to play captain. So Thank you. He's already got enough going on. Appreciate it. Happy yeah. Captain Navarro. No, Captain <laughs> Martinez Day. Yes, Hector, you turned 30. How does I that did. feel? Ooh. Yeah. Um, How do you feel? So far, so far, same. 
Same. Same. Same. Uh, yeah. Wait until you start getting this happening. <laughs> oh, when, got, when this starts to happen, yeah, is yeah. it already happening? I got that the distinguished. Grays. You know, yeah, I got just, a lot of these. It, this it, was the thing I always said. I was like, I'm never gonna dye my hair. I'll, I'll go full Steve Martin. I'll just be happy to have it if I have it. No big deal. But then these started to crop up, and I'm like, ah, hmm, yeah, what am I gonna do to about me this? The whites. <laughs> um, I gotta say though, Hector, I think uh, I think you're gonna make a handsome older man. I think oh, you're gonna age pretty well. Hopefully, you're on the track. I'll have some of that. Handsomeness is coming for you, Hector. Hold on. One day. Hang in there, buddy. Cool. Hang in there. Hopefully I get some of that Mexican thing where Mexicans look real good up to a certain point and then we look ancient. Like, I hope I get some of that. You go full Danny Trail. Yeah, I hope I hope I look 40 until I'm like 60 and then I look 80. Like, yeah, yeah. Day I turn 60. I don't know, man. Danny Trail, he may look he, he may look aged, but the, that dude's handsome too. He's got his own thing going. Yeah, he's a very old man. I'm hoping I get, I get the, and Gina, you can, we're Irish, so it's like, I don't know, we, we don't have consistency. Like no. I, I've noticed that we no, don't. No, I went gray at nine. So like, <laughs> yeah, join the club. <laughs> I, I, I don't even know. I don't even know what to say. Like uh, I, I don't know what's going to happen to me. I, I, I mean, I've got my right. parents are still pretty. You know, looking good. So I, th I think I'm in. I'm in the clear. I think what's going to happen to me is I'm going to get the lines, 16, the smile lines, so like, I think on I'm my good. eyes and stuff. Mm -hmm. I was I raised on Bayou water, so I won't age. <laughs> 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 I'm in my I'm in my thirties. <laughs> Uh, I, you're doing all right. Uh -huh. you uh, anybody have I, any I other announcements? Grace, though, that'd be cool. I have announcements. Yes, fire away. Um, I would like to encourage everyone. Speaking of heritages, um, I mm. uh, I have a lot of family in Puerto Rico. A lot mm. of my family heritage is from Puerto Rico. Um, please, please, if you have an extra little money or uh, toiletries, batteries, LED flashlights, there are some wonderful organizations that are on the ground in Puerto Rico that are um, trying to help connect people to resources. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure you all have been reading about what's going on there, or maybe not, but uh, Puerto Rico is a beautiful place. It it like so much of my personality is informed by my Puerto Rican side and people don't even realize that because mm -hmm. I don't seem Puerto Rican I don't quote unquote act or look Puerto Rican mm -hmm. but a lot of my personality comes from my mom and my, my abuela and like all my that side of the family too so um, it's just yeah it's a, a special culture and a special place in my heart and I just would like to encourage people to uh, throw some, a few bucks or some donations their way mm -hmm. it's, um, should, it's Team Human's anniversary there is no better time to celebrate yeah. being a human then if you've yeah. got the ability to do so throw in some support for Puerto Rico because they they need it right now badly you should do like a, a group donation as uh, and as the USS Sally ride like that would be lovely that would be I great. actually so on, uh, on Sunday I'm gonna be if anyone and this is for you know I guess for the Geek and Sundry family anyone mm -hmm. who's, worried, who's like watching in local um, this Sunday and every week as long as they're doing this I'm gonna go and drop off supplies wherever in LA they're taking supplies mm -hmm. so this weekend I'm gonna do that on Sunday afternoon if anyone in LA in Los Angeles in the Geek and Sundry family has some like like I said it's, it can be clothing uh, even like camping equipment like mm -hmm. um, I just got back from Burning Man and I got a bunch of camping well, equipment I don't yeah, need that, that's so, awesome yeah. Um, yeah I've got some stuff that I would love to donate yeah. Okay. Lots of clothes. Great. So Yay. Could, yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Awesome. That's okay. rad. Okay. So um, what we'll do to moving forward is we'll we'll give you guys heads up, but just keep your eye on Geek and Sundry Twitter, and we'll let we'll just give just to make it easy, we'll throw some links at you guys yeah, if y'all want to know places. what you can do to help. Yeah. Um, if you're not in LA, like yeah. there's I mean everywhere there's going to be places <clears throat> that will take monetary donations online, or you mm -hmm. can drop off supplies somewhere. So yeah, yeah that's a great. Yeah. Cool. We'll tweet them out. Yeah, we'll get it going. Cool. Absolutely. Um, does anybody else have any uh, announcements before we jump into the game? Yes, Sam. Hi. Um, I actually have a few announcements. Yes, fire away. Um, oh, yes, you do. Yes, fire <laughs> yes. away. So, one, this past weekend I performed at UCLA. Uh, my a short preview version of my piece with Kai Hazelwood, No Spoons, Only Knives. It was streamed on Facebook Live, and there is still a link for it on the UCLA housing page. I will... Uh, retweet that out, hopefully on break, and you can actually see me dancing. I'm hoping that we're going to get um, the longer 10-minute version that I did a few weeks ago also out there for you guys, and we're going to be doing reshoots later in the year. Um, my other announcement is that some of you might know that I have a relationship to pencils. <laughs> <laughs> this might be shocking. I, I know, I know, I know. Um, <laughs> 
But it turns out that a pencil company, Dick and Ticonderoga, found no that joke. out. <laughs> no um, joke. Because one of the lovely people who watches our show tweeted at them, and I got pencils. Sam is being sponsored by a pencil <laughs> company. Oh my gosh. So, I don't think they realize what she does by what they do with them, though. <laughs> like, yeah, it's like, they're not they know that it's like a problem, though. Right they yeah. might actually know because Rachel Fox at uh, Dixon Ticonderoga sent me these really lovely pencils. Yeah. Like, you don't get to break these. They're too mm -hmm. nice. Like, <laughs> they're really pretty. And, and so... Hector, would you like to test this theory? Yeah. Oh no! <laughs> would you? If, would you, if, you, if you drop yeah. Admiral <laughs> Norville <laughs> Borgville Nash. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for the trifecta. I just need to find a way to throw in Davros's name in there, and we can go. Davrog <laughs> Nash. Yeah, those All right. The ones that you got from. No, these are Team Human pencils. Oh. <laughs> Well, thank you Those for sending them the ammunition, Team Human, yet again. Yeah, so you are, um, thank you, Team Human. You are helping me spare these beautiful pencils that I will, oh my gosh, actually use to write with, yeah. like pencils do. Uh, nice. Which is why, and I come now to my final announcement. Uh, final. I am excited. And Sam's Yay! excited. Yay! Which is the official go-ahead, so we can actually start tonight's episode. Yeah. That brings our announcements to an end, so let's go ahead and jump into tonight's season finale for Shield of Tomorrow. Back everybody to Shield of Tomorrow. Um, real quick before we start the night's game, there was one last announcement I forgot, but I'll keep it brief. I just wanted to give a big loving shout out to Angelus two one four, also known as Lee. He's the one. They are the one that sent us um, the uh, Sally Ride model, the custom made Sally Ride replica. It's so like everyone's been gushing about it, Lee. So thank you so much. And I've got your letter here. It's uh, it was so great. I'll, I'll let um, I'll make this available to you guys. It was a, it's a nice, chunky, like wonderful, heartfelt letter. Um, also a fan of TBD RPG. So thank you for following us. Um, it's lovely to have you. Um, it's so damn pretty. It's on my desk. I'll show it to all anybody wants to see it. It's Lee. Yeah. Thank you, Lee. Um, Okay, um, all right, so let's go ahead and uh, play some Star Trek. Let's uh, do some recapping of what happened to the USS Sally Ride when last we left off, because we were wrapping up a pretty crazy adventure. Um, previously on Shield of Tomorrow, the Sally Ride had just staged a daring rescue of her command crew from a rogue planet, also known as Regular, Regular, Regular One, I believe. Um, yeah, regular one had been supposedly in the regular system now just floating through space being drawn towards a black hole specifically a zero nine nine four one eight a stellar black hole the size of 90 solar units or roughly 90 times the size of Sol. Um, you managed to rescue the command crew but at some cost um, Hector you did manage Martinez was able to get some of that data out of that system before you guys were beamed away from the computer core. Um, you were able to download any, even the corrupted files you were able to get into a data rod as you transported out. Um, it's basically, the information that you got from that computer is downloaded into your tricorder. Um, cool. Yes, you were able to pull that off. Um, unfortunately, 
the life form that you all encountered there, which apparently was a byproduct of the Genesis cave that was created by Dr. Carol Marcus and her son David with their science team from Space Lab Regular One, um, was killed when you attempted to rescue it from an inevitable fate at the hands of a black hole. Um, in an attempt to beam it off planet in just a, a, a desperate attempt to save its life, when it arrived in sick bay, um, it died almost immediately. Mm -hmm. Though it doesn't, judging from the way it died, it didn't look like it was a painful death. It just reached out, it left, the last thing it did was it reached out to Dr. Throlo and took your hand as it wilted and turned brown, and then life functions ceased. Sally Ride was able to bank and get away from the event horizon just as this planetoid, Regula, was pulled into the singularity, and um, sensors were able to detect this planet's destruction, but it did vanish as uh, into just total blackness. So you weren't really able to see um, the final fate of Regular One, but you were able to record it. Um, we pick up tonight, moments after the death of this plant creature. You have all been beamed on board the um, back on board the Sally Ride, um, and have reunited with your crew. The only exception, of course, is Throlo, who's beamed directly to sick bay, um, and who's down there now, Matazi right next to you, who is slowly closing up his tricorder and looking at you. Matazi seems to understand what's happened. He doesn't know what this creature is, but he's looking at Dr. Throlo and back at the creature, and being a nurse knows the significance of what's happened here, and he doesn't say a word. He just slowly closes the tricorder. Um, what's even more haunting and a bit heartbreaking about this scene in Sick Bay is when this creature dies, it doesn't collapse to the ground or fall over. It, in fact, just is fixed in place. And so for if it wasn't browned and wilted, it would almost seem like it was still very much alive. And it's still holding the hand of one Dr. Throlo. Um, you receive, uh, Captain, confirmation that Dr. Throlo has beamed successfully to sick bay, uh, but you haven't heard anything else. You don't know how that transport went. You do know that the creature was beaming to sick bay as well. And myself and my first officer, we mm -hmm. are on, are on the, the you transporter guys, room? Transporter pad, yeah. You're, and you're just pulling your space helmet off, basically your, your support <sighs> suit. Um, yeah, you're getting some... Uh, the air in here is much different, obviously. it's This is... The Sally Ride's uh, environmental system is a lot more optimized. You're not pulling from an old environmental system that was on Regula. But um, so as you kind of t pull the helmet off, there's a moment where it's a little bit nauseating and then you kind of acclimate it immediately. And um, you and Rue standing next to each other on the pad. Um, and you see at the transporter pad is, uh, we're gonna go ahead and put, uh, we're gonna go ahead and put our new chief there. I was there, I made the roll. What's that? I said I was there, I made the roll. That's right, mm -hmm. that's right, you did make the roll. Um, so why don't you remind okay. everybody your character's name and rank, because uh, you are our new player. Yeah, Chief Mala Ren, glad you're safe, sir. Ren, thank you, nice work, thanks. Good to see you, Chief. Commander, are you all right? Yes, sir. You? Did you get the data? I think so. Have I been notified of that yet, or? Yeah, no, you got the confirmation. That, so the uh, right, yeah. it happened literally seconds before yes. the transport began to happen. You saw a confirmation that you got everything you were looking for. I got what I got. I'm just <laughs> glad that we're okay. I'm gonna activate my communicator. <laughs> Martinez is sick bay. You hear that over the comm? Mm, yes, Captain. Doctor, did our new passenger survive the trip? No, they did not. I'm sorry, Thrillo. I'm sorry, Captain. Are you all right? I'm fine. We're just looking at options. Options? Anything we can learn. It doesn't look like there's... It doesn't look like there's anything we can do, but 
We're, uh, it's early days. I understand, Doctor. Thank you. Martinez out. <sighs> All right. Well. Sir, would you like to try to get some of that corrupted data to Ensign Sage? Perhaps she could clean it up a little bit. Yeah. Uh, that was my next plan. I was going to check the data in my red room, see what I got, see what we have for my report. And uh, I'll probably have to contact um, Starfleet, let them know what happened, but I will touch base with Sage and send Lark to see if they can help. So, yes, thank you, Commander. All right, well. Anything you need from me, sir? No, just, um, you know, <laughs> uh, just get acclimated back to, um, to, I guess, your regular duty as soon as possible. As always, I need you um, to continue performing admirably. Thank you, Commander. Nice, nice, nice job down there. Thank you. Thanks. All right, I guess I'm going to head to the bridge because um, it feels like everything is winding down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, great. He heading to the bridge, um, mm -hmm. it takes uh, probably approximately 10 minutes after transport. Um, I'm guessing, are you going to leave your, uh, I'm just curious, like what Talon sees walking onto the bridge. Are you still in your suit? Yeah, what's the procedure for that normally? You just take like, that thing off. you got your uniform on underneath. So, yeah. Yeah. Huh. I was just curious what, what... Do we have to do any sort of... I mean, no. we've beamed Decontam up to the ship. I think yeah. No. yeah, yeah, yeah. The it's easy to remove. The transporter care. does that. Yeah, just leave it on the transporter. Maybe. Um, well, it's I'm going to clean. take my clunky suit off okay. wherever is most convenient to have that suit be taken off. I'm not sure. going to do it on the bridge. There's probably not a lot of space on the bridge for a suit like that. <laughs> wherever that suit goes, that's where I'm going to go to okay. take my suit off, put the suit there. What is Rue doing? I'm going to begin debriefing the officers who are aboard Sally Ride. I might as well start with... Are you going to head to the bridge then? Um, I presume our captain would be debriefing any bridge officers, so I might as well start with our engineering staff. Okay. Um, happens to be one in the transporter room. <clears throat> um, That's true. Perhaps um, she would be willing to accompany me to Jiv in engineering, if you would be so kind, Chief. That's where I'm headed next, Commander. All right. All right, Let's so move two on. of you are headed down to engineering. Um, I need to know what's going on in sickbay. Um, Matazi looks at you and says, Doctor, I, I could start arranging samples to be taken. Run every test we have. If there's any artificial environment we can build... I know what it looks like. But no one's ever seen this form of life before. Let's make no assumptions. He nods and he nods to a few of the other medical staff and a couple of ensigns and a lieutenant comes over and they start to move the, the body a little bit. And as they do, its hand, as it's kind of pulling away from you, you see it start like cracks off like dried leaves and just kind of breaks a little bit as it pulls away from you. And you see this like almost like a dust just take into the air as this thing gets pulled away and its body just kind of crumbles a little bit. They immediately adjust and begin to m compensate for the fragility of the corpse as they move it deeper into sickbay towards the back area where the quarantine zone is. Write it down. Write all of it down. Yes, doctor. Yes, doctor. And they will proceed. Um... So walking onto the bridge is Captain Martinez. Um, Martinez, as you step onto the bridge, the first thing you see is your science officer standing up from the center chair and your helmswoman uh, swivel to meet your eyes as you step back to home, basically. I have a little drip of sweat because <laughs> that was pretty intense. Yes, that was some fancy flying. <laughs> Captain on the bridge. Good work, Ensign. Thank you. Thank nice you, Captain. Done. It's good to have you back. Lieutenant Commander, I uh, presume that you've kept everything in order while I was gone? As best as I could, Captain. Good. I expect nothing less. Um, we'll have to have a, I guess, a bit of a debrief here with senior staff in a few moments when everybody is, when everybody's ready. There's really no rush. Um, I'll have to fill everybody in on the details, but suffice it to say, we had a lot of ups and a lot of downs, so. 
We are grateful for your safe return to the ship. Grateful, Talon? Yes. Are you expressing the emotion of gratitude? I'm expressing the thought of, well, I'm grateful, Captain. <laughs> Thank you, Ensign. Yeah, that's saved by great. Ensign. Thank you. I may have been temporarily, yes, grateful. I am grateful that you are returned to the ship. I do not enjoy command, Captain. <laughs> I did not want to say that on the bridge in front of the senior staff, but. <laughs> well, I think it, uh, it suits you very well, Lieutenant Commander. Command, that is. Thank you, Captain. You're welcome. Um, all right, well, I guess uh, give me a status report before I head into my ready room to, um, to work on my report. Um, just bring me up to speed. <gasps> we are moving away from the black hole. Okay. We had contact with a freighter with a captain by the name of... Mm, Sarah Goldstein. Sarah Goldstein. 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 Hmm. What kind of a freighter? It was a junker. Uh, I don't... May I ask why you came into contact with a junker? By the way, just so you know, so you're aware of the situation, uh, the Zhao is still on sensors. She's right where you left her. So oh, she's she's way is she moving away from the black she, hole. Though? Yeah, she stopped. She she broke from your path. Okay, so she's safe. But she's not. No, no, she's not in the gravitational okay. wake. Oh, okay. But but the Zhao. I, I yeah, far back. But the Zhao yeah. is still lingering away from the the wake itself. Because okay. we asked her to stay in case we needed yeah. transfer. Yeah. So she's still out there. Yeah. Oh, Captain, may I just say we have something in the targo bay that might interest you. <laughs> All right, Cargo I don't know. Bay, my bad. I don't know how Target. much better this yeah, right. this day can get. Honestly, it's kind of like my birthday. I've got some. I've got some. That's so uh, meta. We do have a gift of sorts for you. <laughs> well, great. Um, I can't wait to uh, unwrap it. I guess. Captain, I don't know. Thank if I you. may finish telling you about yeah, the what, freighter, though. What, what kind of? Why a junk freighter? Why out here? In the trail of the rogue planetoid that you were stuck on. Okay. There was a trail of debris from other ships and vessels that had also similarly crash landed or been caught in that in that gravitational pull so this junk freighter had been looking for as they said legal ways to make some type of okay. uh, recompense garbage right. shopping mm -hmm. well out here they're, they're they're fully entitled to to that sort of scrap as long as it's within starfleet regulations okay captain if you don't do you mind if we move to your ready room to discuss further? Not at all. All right. <laughs> is it Sage, just you? You it watch them as they turn and like, walk. Yeah. Oh, me too. Just, I, yeah, I don't want to talk yeah. on the bridge about oh. this. Oh, senior staff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, turn Thanks. around, Thanks. everybody else on the bridge. <laughs> don't look at us. Thanks. And in don't just look at us. and in just like the series, as you get up and swivel out of this <laughs> out of that, and Ensign taking the cue steps forward into your station. Do not understand? And and they're gonna wa start walking, and then if Talon can turn around and look at me, but Ensign. Oh, yes. Oh. Will you join us? Oh, yes, Lieutenant Commander. Sorry, I didn't know I was included. At one point, I'm going to need so. a rundown of everybody's name on the bridge because I feel bad. Every, I would love else to is, know that too. Yeah, really? Yeah. It's right now, point. I'm just keeping them as ensigns because I like to let yeah. the ox crew. <laughs> yeah. uh, I like yeah, I like yeah. the I like letting our Discord server. Yeah. The okay. guys totally because they have an R. I don't know if anybody knows this, but our our rad Discord server has an RP channel where they actually role play the rest of the crew of the Sally ride. I love that. Um, so and awesome. we've accumulated an entire list of names of all the uh, members of our crew on the Sally ride. So I kind of keep it vague in the narrative so that mm -hmm. they can yeah. pick who is interacting uh, at that time. Well, then, um, so they'd but have I will say this. Shifts for the yes. three shifts of the day. So depending wow. on the time of day, you'd have different ox crew. That's yeah. Okay, so cool. here's what I'm going to ask as captain. I'm going to throw my weight around a little bit. Okay. And I'm going to ask the ox crew to get me the names of on like the like the main shift. What's like the, like the day shift? Alpha like shift. Alpha oh, shift. Okay. Names of everybody else on the bridge and their favorite Movie. Ooh. That's what I'm gonna need from you guys. All right, Oscar, you heard. Get your homework. Can that you is get your homework. Can I, I don't know the ladder. As science officer, can I throw my <laughs> weight around? Sure. Well, okay, so uh, Talon also has homework. Species as well. Yeah. What is it? Species as well. Species as well. Yeah. But more importantly, I'll give you the uh, favorite movie species. first. Oh. I'll give you access to the doc that they've they've typed up for us. Right. We have we have all of it. It's pretty rad. And as the lowest ranking officer on the bridge, I'd like to throw my weight around and say, keep up the good work. Drink all the cream soda. <laughs> friends. Um, Where go, Discord? All right, let's, let's head to my okay. You step into the ready room. Uh, the door um, sh closes behind the three of you. 
Captain, I am not an expert in negotiations, but I was put in a place where I needed to barter for help to find you. Okay. We- Lieutenant Commander, let me stop you there. Is this something that um, that uh, um, Commander Rue and possibly Dr. Shishiro should also be aware of? Should I ask them to join us in the ready room before you proceed? Yes, I believe that would be beneficial. Okay. Okay, so then let's cut to Rue, mm-hmm. um, because at this point, Rue and Ren would have gotten to uh, engineering. Mm-hmm. So um, the two of you step into engineering where you see uh, Jiv is in the middle of a rare moment of pure anger towards one of the uh, ensigns. Um, you're not, y- you arrive just in time to hear him say, well, check it again. You can't mess around with this stuff. It's a dilithium crystal. It's not a ball on a tennis court. Go. And the ensign immediately says, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And moves off. And Jiv is just, he just looks so irritated. And he turns and looks up and says, Commander, welcome back. Good to see you. You look alive. That's a good thing. I'm a fan of it myself. How have things been in engineering? It sounds like people are playing sports <laughs> with dilithium. I'm trying, I'm testing out my uh, earth slang. I kind of improvised that one. You did what with the crystals? It's a long story. It Don't, don't trouble, don't get upset about it, Chief. It's fine, the crystals are fine. I made sure that they are fine. I just put someone on low level diagnostic duty and someone was putting their hands all over the crystals. I shouldn't be doing that. You're not supposed to touch them. You didn't tell them not to touch them? Well, you know, I figured, you know, maybe like all those years at Starfleet would have gotten that into their skull, but apparently you got to remind them from time to time. You do. They're pretty. (laughs) (sighs) Well, what can I do for you two? Sounds like a bit more frustrated than usual, Shiv. Are you doing all right? I'm fine. He abruptly puts the data pad down. What can I do for you? I was hoping to get an engineering report from our absence. Sure thing. I've actually got one typed up already. He pulls out another data pad and says, that's not it. There it is. And he hands it to you. This is what's happened in the past 48 hours. All right, this looks quite thorough. I'll study it and call you up if I have any questions. Well, I'll get back to it then. Commander. <clears throat> Shift goes back to the warp core. You see As him look, looking up at the warp core. You walk up to his side. Um, and at about that point, when you when you walk up to him, kind of looking at your mentor, you hear uh, communications go off. And uh, you hear senior officers to the bridge. Shift goes, that's me. He hands you the pad. I'll take over. Yeah. He nods and walks up to you and says, after you, Commander. Chief, take care of our core. Yeah. No one else touched the crystals! (laughs) (laughs) Um, A few moments later, and senior staff assembles. Now, as you all gather in the in the conference room, it's worth noting that both the Captain Rue and also Dr. Throlo, as y'all walk into this room, um, ready to reconnect with your crew, find out what's going on, a wave of exhaustion is starting to hit all three of you. (laughs) When when you gave me the call, I would have asked if this was without really thinking, I would have been like, "Is, is this, is that an order? And then sort of caught myself and been like, right, of course. Um, yeah, so Thrillo walking in, um, just because you know your crew's health, walking in, even though Martinez and Rue are both kind of holding themselves up, you can, you know the signs of exhaustion. You've seen it in the minds and you, you're seeing it on their faces too. And you're quite aware that not only just your entire adventure and the physical exertion of bouncing across the surface of Regula for five kilometers and the crash and the concussion and like getting banged up and then the everything you all have gone through and now the emotional toll of losing that creature, like all of it, the signs have kind of started to show the exhaustion's really setting in. 
The only slight exception is Martinez might still be riding. I, I would say you're kind of still riding that high, that adrenaline high for what you've got in your tricorder right now. And that's where this scene begins as you all step into the conference room to see each other for the first time in the past couple of days. Just to ask a question. No, weeks, really, because you guys have been gone at a conference. That's true. Just yeah. to ask a question, the event of the shuttle crashing has been, what, 48 hours? I would say 48 hours. hours. It's been about, so Sally Ride up picked you guys up pretty quick. 48 hours. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Um, before I dismiss everybody so that we can get some well-deserved rest, um, I wanted to brief everybody on what uh, had happened on the ship and down on Regula 1. Lieutenant Commander, I think that you wanted to bring Captain, us up to speed first. you hear from the bridge. Mm -hmm. Priority 1 message is coming in from Starfleet Command, sir. All right, I'll take it in my my private quarters, I guess. Do I have a private quarters on the bridge? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got a your ready room. You this can, is a yeah. conference room, but you conference do have a ready room. room. Two yeah. separate rooms. Yeah. I'll take it in my ready room. Thank okay. you. Um, please excuse me. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll be right back. If um, Lieutenant Commander, if you feel like you wanted to go ahead and address everybody while I'm gone, I would be fine. I can be brought up to speed. I'll be back as soon as I can. I would prefer to wait until right. I could you recount were there. the events to the crew on Sally Thank Rod you. Thank in you. your absence, sir. Because okay. I was there for that, so I wouldn't need to be there for the recap. Thank you. I will. So take you this can say narratively, you exposition explain. Exposition dump sure. onto <laughs> exposition <our> dump. <laughs> um, so walking into your ready room, you swivel around your your data pad. Um, it's a text-based message, priority one, it's encoded. You give your authorization signal and basically what comes up on the screen are uh, orders from the top. It's a priority one message and it's coming through encoded. This is not... Is this the head of Starfleet, the top? What are we um, talking? It's, yeah, it's basically, it's one of the, f there's, it's signed one of the admirals, it's not Nash. Hmm. Um, it's actually comes from, the name on the order is, oh, where is it? I even bolded it so I could, so I could find it quickly. Well, then Eric, find I it. I know. Boldly go. Admiral Fujisaki, Vice Admiral. Fujisaki. Fujisaki. Oh, yeah. Fujisaki, he is F-U-J-I-S-A-K-I, Fujisaki. Thanks. Nailed it. Vice Admiral Fujisaki. It has a lot of the typical, you know, stiff upper lip sort of Starfleet speak from the brass, but it in no uncertain terms basically states that um, you are to report back to Starbase 138 at, fast, at maximum possible speeds. And underneath this order is explicit language that, that basically makes, in no uncertain terms, <clears throat> Fujisaki, this vice admiral, is aware, somehow is aware, that you have had contact mm. or have been, or that the Sally Ride has been searching for information on Project Genesis. Mm. Because the order specifically states that until your arrival at Starbase 138, you are under orders to not utter the word Genesis, mention it to your crew, or speak of it in any way. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. And you are to report to Commander Vidak, the Vulcan commander on mm -hmm. Starbase 138 upon arrival. If you didn't know any better, Martinez, there is almost a punitive sound to the message. There's just something about the tone of the way it was written that almost sounds like daddy's angry. Vice Admiral or Vice Principal? Yeah. Skinner. <laughs> yeah. I may be exhausted, and I'm going to look at this again after I get some rest, but my okay. first my first plan of action here is that I'm going to set in a course for Starbase 138. Okay. Maximum warp. Uh, when you say that, the incident at the controls goes, maximum warp, sir? Yes, sir. Aye, Captain. Thank you. And the cells go up. Sally Ride once again slips into warp at maximum speed. The fastest Federation <laughs> starship currently in the stars. I'm going to uh, back into the conference room. At maximum warp, you will arrive at Starbase 138 in three days. Okay. Great. Okay. Uh, a few moments pass. 
um, after Commander Rue finishes the entire story and almost on cue, Captain comes walking right back in. What did I miss? We've brought our bridge crew up to speed, sir. And um, it is good timing for... It, it is worth noting, I should have I should have described, uh, you are all very much aware that the Sally Ride has jumped to warp. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Just from looking out the window. <laughs> so. uh, yeah, I think we just saw it on Sage's face. She has, like, the warp yeah, like, sense. What? <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Someone's going fast and it's not me? Well, that, that just, that just takes me back to the Relics episode where Scotty was talking about how he used to be able to tell how fast the ship was going by the mm-hmm. feel of the deck plates. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I can tell um, the feel on Sage's face. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> was I like, used to ah, be able to tell yeah. how fast the ship was going by how confused Sage would look when <laughs> it was happening and she wasn't at the controls. <laughs> like, wait a minute. <laughs> I didn't do this. <laughs> what happened? I'm What's that happening? good. I just went to yeah. warp and I'm in this conference room. And in that moment, when we go to warp, I also am like, and I look at Sage. <laughs> um, and then, and yeah. I'm just thinking about what on earth that we're jumping to warp. Yeah. Well, well, to to warpy your warp. I, I will have at some point in that uh, description of events asked Talana. I would very much appreciate your expertise if you could take a look at the the sample we retrieved of the new life form. Of course. Just for everyone's information, we have been ordered to report to Starbase One Three Eight at maximum warp. Do you and need me back at the helm, sir? No, no, it's fine. Um, our ensign. They've got it under control out there, but uh, I need you in here for now. So after Lieutenant Commander Talon brings us up to speed with what happened on the ship, um, I'll elaborate on why we're heading to Starbase 138. Oh, shoot. Captain, (laughs) part of my update. Was that in character? (laughs) Not really, no. (laughs) Technically, yes. Oh, uh, we we should have mentioned that. Yeah, I was going to say that. That was my... Oh, Captain, oops. before we moved to warp, there would have been some information that would have been very helpful to you mm-hmm. before we left that location, but the past is in the past. We can always double back if it's that necessary. We were assisted by a junk freighter. Right, you told me, yeah. The The ship was captained by a Captain Sarah Goldstein, mm-hmm. who assisted us in doing some metallurgy scans. In, in finding us. To help, yes. The shuttle to help aid our search for the shuttle. Uh, We were able to equip her ship with, I believe, two replicators in exchange for their help. Good. And also uh, refitted their uh, Ferengi ore detector. This is the bartering you were describing. Yes, exactly. Okay. Um, It would be helpful, I believe, and diplomatically advantageous to inform them of why we have left the location so quickly. It may Mm -hmm. put them at alarm or at the defense I understand. to see us leaving the area so soon without having given them a warning or some type of closing statement after our dealings with them. I completely understand. You are um, more than free to contact uh, Captain Goldstein as soon as uh, as soon as this meeting's done. I think we can, we can reach out to her and bring her up to speed. Captain, may I yeah. go and do that right now? I'd actually like you to stick around for just a moment. Yes, sir. And as soon as we're done with this briefing then we can all be dismissed and finally get some rest and you can uh, contact Captain Goldstein. But when you mentioned the barding, was there anything that we owed this junk freighter, Captain? Yes, Captain. What did we owe them? I forget. (laughs) Aliza forgets. Talon knows. (laughs) Talon knows. I think we didn't give them the extra replica food replicator. We promised them when we returned that we would install another food replicator. Yep, that's what what she said. um, So we could send them a message over subspace to come to Starbase 138 at their speed. If it's and not once they've arrived. Correct. If it's not out of uh, out of the way for them, that or is, we can set up some future some future trade, but I will absolutely ensure and you, you have of course the the complete and full power to give them their their replicator. That's what they uh, you know, it's yeah. worth noting if they're willing to come to Starbase 138, we could probably help them a lot more than just giving them a replicator. Thank you, Jeff. Okay. I mean, it's a civilian transport that basically helped the Federation starship in a time of distress. We'll do That's right by them. Yeah, absolutely. That's we could probably do a little bit more. So I'm going to go in my report. Give them Thank a you. Polish. Yeah. Okay. Take so the ship a bit. You'll be sure to let Captain Goldstein know all of that after this meeting, and then we'll go from there. Yes, sir. But you can let let her know that we'll. She'll be sure to get her replicator and possibly more, whenever she can. Okay. Was there anything else that happened on the ship past two days? 
Vincent? For the past few weeks. Anything of note. Has anybody told him yet? He, he needs to go down to the cargo bay. You need to go down to the cargo bay, Captain. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. I, uh, Permission to accompany you to see your face. <laughs> <laughs> this is the gift you were describing. Yes, sir. Is there any way that uh, the gift can wait until until? You're not gonna. You, you're gonna be upset if we make you wait. I think you might be upset if I make you wait. <laughs> well, what I'm about to tell I everybody in this room. You don't ever let him get to sleep. Mm-hmm. Okay, doctor. All right. Um, let's just get this over with. So, um, as I'm sure Commander Rue let everybody know, we found a. A science lab that was engaging in an incredibly classified experiment. We also found a cave and we found a life form. Um, this lab was, it seemed, operated by Dr. Carol Marcus and her son David. If you're not familiar with those names, that's all right. I'll let it slide. <laughs> but, uh, David Marcus was the name of Admiral James T. Kirk's son, and Carol was the mother of his son. Um, I am almost positive that I saw footage of James T. Kirk in this lab with somebody with their hand to their ear, probably one of Kirk's crewmen, crew people, um, and um, I think I may have seen David and Carol themselves in the footage as well. I was able to save some data, transfer it to my personal data pad before it was all lost. But the level of security clearance that this data and this information has is absolutely the top of Starfleet. I should not even be telling anybody in this room what I have been saying for the past few moments. And it will not leave this room. It absolutely will not leave this room. I need to go and decipher this data right now to see what I have. And since age, I may require some of your skills, but everything is going to be completely classified. I am breaking a lot of codes right now, but I have a feeling. My instinct is telling me that the information that I'm going to get could be incredibly dangerous, which is why it was classified in the first place. What this lab was doing with regeneration, with, with, with DNA, with, it was incredible. This, this, this cave could very well have been man-made, and this was a cavern. This was, this was something out of a Jules Verne novel. This was indescribable. Um, it could be potentially dangerous, incredibly dangerous, or it could be nothing, but I have been ordered to take the ship to Starbase 138 at maximum warp, and I have explicitly been told not to mention Project Genesis, even utter those words to my crew. And I'm only saying this to my senior staff. It doesn't leave this room. I'm going to find out what I need to find out, and I worry that some of this information may fall into the wrong hands if Starfleet is this concerned with keeping my mouth shut. So, that's what I found out, and that's what I have yet to find out. I'm about to unearth some of this information. I don't know what it could be. I don't know how dangerous it could be, but that's what just happened. And I'm tired. (laughs) Okay. Um, The car going. Right. Uh, Do I need to look at this gift now, or would it be possible to wait eight hours to to get a, a nice shift of rest, or... All right, Ensign well, Sage, you got a look on your face like we need to go look I at this I just feel, Captain, bay. that okay. what we have in the cargo bay could be relevant to to your research on PG. Since Are we you c- trying to codify Project Genesis? Yes, okay, Captain. You can say it in this room. Project it's fine. Genesis. Okay. Thank you, Ensign. All right. Um, all right, well, then I guess let's head to the let's head to the cargo bay, unless there's anything else. Commander Rude, did I leave out any details? I, I, I don't know. I may have hit my head. Then I'm sure our doctor would be happy to look you over and do whatever is necessary. I would like to extend thanks to Lieutenant Commander Talon for her work in rescuing us. It was my duty. And it was well done. Thank you. This 
despite what you said, Captain, she made a good captain. I believe it. Yeah. Hmm. Doctor, did I miss any details of what went down the past two days? Nothing I can think of. Lieutenant Commander Tolan, I would love your help. This... This new life, brief as it was, may have many secrets for us. Yeah. Yeah, it was quite an experience to come in contact with this life. Um, Doctor, if you don't want to see the look on my face, you're dismissed to head back to uh, sickbay, if you wanted to do that. And um, anybody else that doesn't want to join me, don't feel obligated to either, but it seems like Ensign Sage really wanted to use this as a pick-me-up, right? So. Sure. I, I officially recommend you rest with satisfied curiosity. <laughs> I think you'll find it more refreshing. Thank you, Doctor. Mm -hmm. I All believe right. if you have no further need of me, I will be taking that rest, sir. Yeah. Good work, Commander. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Enjoy right. your gift. You're dismissed. Thanks. Great. All right. Let's go to the cargo bay. Uh, um, curiously enough, uh, when you say that Jiv doesn't even look lo look up, it looks like he's just sitting in his chair, and it occurs to you, anybody who's looking at Jiv, he may not have heard a word that was just said. He's just sitting there sort of staring off. Do I see this? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a little out of okay. character for Jiv, who usually wants to get the hell out of here Jiv? the moment. He just says... Gets up. Let's go check out that thing in the cargo bay. Okay, so, great. Yeah? I'm just as an aside. Okay. I saw him going off at an ensign earlier. Okay, I want to talk with you soon. Okay, yes, sir. go get some Everyone makes their way down to the cargo bay? Yeah, before we leave uh, the room, no. again, just to clarify, nothing I said is to leave this room. Yes, sir. Understood, Captain. Thank you. Jeff? Oh, yeah. Oh. I, Thank you. I would like to stay here and immediately go over to okay. the console. Yep. And so everybody heads out. my message. You move over to the console. Mm -hmm. And I say, uh, Dr. Shishiros, I need to send this message first if you can uh, wait for me to do that and then I can happily, or not happily, goodness, I'm so not Vulcan today. <laughs> I will follow you to the sick bay to see your sample. I appreciate it. Much as I, unless you need to rest first. Uh, I'll see you soon. I walk over to the console and uh, start putting together my message to okay. Captain Goldstein. Question, Eric. Was there in the message from Starfleet a fake reason that the ship is heading to Starbase 138 at warp speed? Like, did they give me oh. a, if anybody asks, the party this, line? Is, this yeah. is why you're warp speeding to Starbase 138? No. Shit. All right. Oh, make it up. <laughs> Okay. You might have to improvise. Say something. Here. <laughs> it just um, said, "Please report to Starbase One Three Eight right. at best possible speeds." Um, mm -hmm. you are I'll address the ship. I'll, okay. You are under yeah. orders yeah, yeah. not to mention <laughs> any knowledge of Project Genesis under uh, under penalty of court martial. Mm -hmm. Not all satisfaction. Uh, not all curiosity in the crew needs to be satisfied immediately. Great. Yeah, I mean, people looking out the window would definitely see the Starfield kind of tilt as the Sally Ride banks and turns to port and then goes jumping to warp. But that's everyone else. It's business as usual below decks. Great. So, okay. um, so you're going to you raise. It doesn't take long for you to raise Sarah on the com, and as her face appears through on the subspace message, she goes, "Oh well, I didn't think I was going to see your face again. Certainly not so soon." Apologies for our quick departure from You're, that location. Did you get your friends at least? We did. Good. And we thank you for your assistance. Yeah, it worked out pretty well for you. I have a pretty angry crew on my hands right now. I must apologize on behalf of our ship. We had to leave that location before I could debrief the captain about our promises to yeah, you. Yeah, I know how this goes. You got what you wanted and you took off. Well, I hope it all works out for you, Sally Ride. I have an offer for you. She kind of, all right. You we, want me to what? You want me to head back towards the black hole or something? No, that would not be logical. <laughs> I'll give you that. We would like for you to meet us at Starbase 138, if you are able to, and we will be able to refit not only your second replicator, but also give you any other upgrades that are within reason for your assistance 
in our time of need. We'll need to know where Starbase 138 is. <laughs> I can send you the coordinates. All right. I'll see if I can convince my crew. They're already a little jumpy right now. But um, if you're on the level, and I guess you must be because you've got pointed ears, so you probably aren't lying, then I guess I could... Uh, I guess I could do that, yeah. Perhaps you will find some junk or other supplies on your way to the Starbase. It will be a f at least a few days, possibly several days until you arrive. Well, we do have a new replicator. I guess it's time to try out what scent the hall tastes like. <laughs> We can remove the safety protocol on that, right? Get it to serve actual alcohol? I'm not aware of the replicator's inner workings. I'll, I'll mess with it. It's fine. Yeah. All right. I'll take you up on your offer. I'll stand by, receive the coordinates, and uh, maybe you'll still be there when I get there. We're not quite as fast as you. Yes, if we leave that place, then we will instruct them to give you all of the upgrades we have promised. All right, that's fair. I'm going to go get to work convincing my crew that you didn't lie to us twice. We never did lie to you in the first place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See you there. <laughs> Shout out. Shout out. Shout out. All right. We'll cut down to the cargo bay, or the targo bay, as you all like to call it. <laughs> um, as the doors open, uh, Captain, you see uh, splayed out across the floor of the cargo bay, there are various pieces of metals and junk that's all being picked up and cleaned up. It looks like it's actually going to be jettisoned back out into space. So it's being assembled near the rear end of the, uh, the cargo bay itself um, towards the back doors. Uh, however, there is one very large piece of metal that looks quite old and gnarled. It's kind of curled up in on itself, mm -hmm. and it has been left uh, untouched away from the junk pile. Um, a few of the instants smile when they see you walk in the door <laughs> and step back, and Jiv walks up and says, um, yeah, there it is. Look, Captain. Huh, I was expecting something um, smaller and... Captain, that is the USS Enterprise. He turns to the wall unit and you see him bring up a file and says, our uh, chief ran some metallurgic tests on it with me and we confirmed that this matches the exact composition of NCC-1701, the refit, when the plating was reapplied just before her departure during that whole giant space cloud incident that took place some time ago. The nebula. Anyway, we found this piece of metal floating just out behind this uh, asteroid. I don't know what the story is. I do know that the Enterprise was lost. But yeah, uh, it was lost a bunch of times. Yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's the face I was waiting for. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's there. It is. There it is again, Martinez. Another piece of history, and this one is a piece of one of the most legendary ships to ever sail the stars. Uh, nicely done, everyone. Good find. You should be thanking the chief. She's the one that found it. Chief? Yeah. Uh, the one yeah, I introduced you to down in the transporter room, Chief Wren. Chief Wren. That's yeah. right. All right. Oh, real quick, I'm gonna go ahead and address this real quick because a lot of people are already asking. I've, <laughs> I've, I'm getting like beeped over here. <laughs> a lot of people are asking why your rank has changed. It was a graphical error last week. We had you as senior chief petty officer. Your, her, uh, her rank is officially just chief petty officer. <laughs> so there was a bit of a like a graphic mix up. So we fixed it. <laughs> so yeah, mm -hmm. that's that. To anybody who's asking the question, we are now uh, at the chief, appropriate rank. I so only she's wrote chief. Down chief Malarin. Yeah. What's that? I only wrote down yeah, chief uh, Malarin because her the official designation 
designation, they just call her Chief because she's Chief Petty Officer. But um, on the graphic overlay oh. in the last episode, how you all have your rank and your pips, yeah. we accidentally used the wrong Chief insignia <laughs> for uh, for Gina's character, so we fixed it this week. We should so everyone was asking, has she been demoted? Yes. Actually, no, yes. No. That's what happened. I just, you know, did such a I just, good job. I, just, I, just, I, have, I, I, I created a random demotion table, and every week I'm just going to roll on it to see who I gets. I looked at him funny in the hall this morning. <laughs> I'm now a cadet. <laughs> Everybody looks at me like, Captain, what do you do? I'm like, I, I don't know. I can't. I, I don't know. I, uh, it says today that I'm, I'm like, supposed to be fixing replicators. I'm, I, I fix replicators now. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, Captain Sage? Okay. So, yeah. Captain uh, Sage. Jib goes, uh, <laughs> Chip says, you know, I know my metallurgy captain, but it was the chief that made the call, and she made the discovery, so she's the one to thank. Oh, we should have put a bow on it. Mala Ren, right? <laughs> Mala Ren, that's Mala right. Mala Ren, that's right. Recognize her name. Okay, yeah. And I'm uh, gonna... be patient with her if you talk to her captain. I've taken her under my wing, but she's kind of uh, a prodigy. She's pretty young for her rank. She's a mm -hmm. bit of a know-it-all, mostly because... She knows it she all. She knows it all, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's been my experience, is that most know-it-alls I've encountered in Starfleet can actually back up their shit, so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> back up their jiv. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not good at puns. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right, great not effort, Jiv. Um, not one of my focuses. This is incredible. This is... I can't believe that I get to deliver this to Starfleet. <clears throat> but I can't believe that I get to have it for three days all to myself <laughs> before it's delivered um we it looks like even with the age on the metal itself it looks like it's probably from some kind of explosion and judging from the fact that it's peeled back the way it is mala and i've been doing some investigating and are passing our time before we jumped into a chase behind a black hole but uh we think it may have been an internal explosion of some kind Possibly a torpedo, or maybe the ship just blew up. I can't really explain it, but... According we, to Admiral Kirk's biography, um, this may have happened around the time that he encountered, for the second time, uh, <clears throat> galactic threat Khan Noonien Singh. And I hmm. have a feeling that that's what this is, that this is a remnant of that battle. He came back, Kirk stopped him, and he lived to tell the tale. Although he did lose... Ambassador Spock, believe it or not, yeah. Well, thankfully, of course, Spock uh, used an ancient Vulcan technique to keep his katra uh, in another officer at the time, uh, Leonard McCoy. And uh, afterwards, well, they were able to. It's a it's a whole long thing. It's a it's a whole long thing, Jeff. But um, Captain, you might need to go sure. to sleep. <laughs> you know, all of a sudden, I just caught a second wind. I think I'd like to spend maybe about thirty minutes, maybe an hour, just kind of. You just kind of lay a pillow <laughs> down next to it and just <laughs> I'll stare at it like a kid who doesn't want to stop playing with their toy. <laughs> Actually, Captain, before I return to duty, may I make a suggestion? Yes, we should return this piece of of the Enterprise to Starfleet. However, I don't think they would mind if a small piece of it was somehow removed and placed upon your desk in some kind of... You right? are a troublemaker, Jiv says as he what? points at you. No! I mean, <laughs> what? What? Because it's... And what Sage, I'm going to pretend I didn't hear that. But it's you're, just you're a small You're dismissed. Piece. You can, can head you? back up yes. to the bridge. Oh, is that bad? Is that not allowed? <laughs> <laughs> Please, Please, someone's like, gonna tell her like, about the Elgin marble. <laughs> Please tell me this is this is all in character. Yes, you're yeah. you're okay. Is this, um, is this a, like no? But seriously, it's like garbage shopping. Jiv, Jiv, Jiv says, Sage, your captain dismissed you. Yes, sir. Lark. Thank you. <laughs> right. As you turn in to to leave, mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, Jiv just goes. I thought it was a good idea. <laughs> You could use a paperweight. I'm just saying, like a really special paperweight. And you, you, you see, yeah. The last thing you see of Lark as she walks out of the room is just her going. I don't know. It's just, just kind of like. Is it bad? Like, like, it like such a good deal. Just, just like, a piece of metal. Um, <laughs> I'm really mad about it, actually. Uh, so with that, we're gonna do a time jump. Unless anybody has anything else, but we're gonna jump to two days from now, a day before you arrive at Starbase One Three Eight. Um, <clears throat> things have. 
Throllo has been keeping herself very busy. <laughs> um, <sighs> normally, you probably... It's, a, again, another testament to the scientific... Uh, ingenuity that went into creating the Sally ride, but the equipment on board the ship, um, you have managed to pull, uh, you've managed to very successfully pique the interest of a resident xenobiologist, or, or rather a xeno anthro, what is it? Anthropologist? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Who, uh, and xenobiology. Do you know? Do you have xenobiology as well? Yeah. Well, let me check. I believe so. To, to, to make I a long do. story short, I have actually, sorry, exoanthropology and xenobiology. So xenobiology is xenobiology, the study okay. of so other, uh, just You biology. basically catch wind that, an, uh, that a brand new right. unknown life form was brought on board where it died. <laughs> um, and Throlo has been throwing themselves into analyzing it and finding out. Uh, Throlo, uh, I'm, I'm guessing what your task is right now, because plants, as we know, are durable and have a pretty miraculous way of, uh, of uh, what's, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, of um, propagating themselves, basically, uh, of creating new life. Um, if you want, I'll let you make some medicine rolls here. If you want to try to uncover any information. Sure. Um, so then this is going to be a reason plus medicine, and I will let Talon help you with this. Awesome. And your xenobiology will absolutely, the focus will definitely come into play here. A um, point of order, if you want an extra momentum, we can give him a threat to yes. buy that. Be able to use my cautious on that, right? And I believe that would be associated with the bold, bold talent rather than the cautious talent, but it would get you the extra die since this is something that's important to throw. And is that I okay, have an guys? Extra yeah. Science officer question. Yes. Just, just put okay. that out there. Which is like I know so it's important. basically a momentum that I will use immediately. So this is going to be a general role to um, uncover whether or not it is possible to save this creature even after death. Yes. Okay. So I'm setting the difficulty here at four. This is going to be a pretty tricky, tricky roll. And, uh. Yeah, uh, we'll <laughs> How can we goose this a little? That's, that's why I'm, I'm down to give him some. Yeah, I'm just going to set the difficulty at a straight okay. four instead of modifying this at all. Is she using sensors or? I will let the Sally Ride assist. So that means it's oh. difficulty three. This, this would be, um, no, 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 it's not a sensor scan. Oh. I'm letting Damn. the Sally Ride's computer That'd systems been... assist here. Oh, I'm just then trying to cheat the Proc system. to advance <laughs> research facilities. That's correct. Lark uh, um, um, Shenanigans. So the, the <laughs> character gains one bonus momentum, which must be used for obtain information spend. But so there's a lot okay. of questions you can ask here. Wait, do we have momentum? Didn't we have it for? There's this talk is about this oh, this no, is because no. there's been a time this jump, is, we would have yeah. lost it all. Uh, That's there, why, yeah. There is there's talk here though of rewarding me one threat so you guys can gain a momentum, I've, which is always an option. Yeah. Like, and of course, you can always call upon you can always spend your determination because nobody's spent theirs yet. Oh yeah, yeah, not for the daily. Oh wait, no, I think you did, didn't you? But I mean, this is a new game anyway. Right? Yeah. It's so huh? it wouldn't matter. Yeah. I think you burned your determination last game to rescue everybody from being swallowed by a black hole, if I remember Good correctly. Job. But it, it wouldn't matter because this game it resets anyway, so you've got it back. Yeah. You've got your determination. I don't remember. <laughs> Either way, I was determined in my soul. Gina's been hitting the Romulan <laughs> ale. It's like, All day. All day. I say we give Eric a threat. Yeah, so we it. get a momentum. I'm happy to threaten and Eric. And we <laughs> spend it to get throw an extra dice. Sam threatens me every time yeah. I make fun of Lark, so. What? Yes. Yeah, lay yeah. off my answer. Lay off my answer. Thanks, Ruby. Um, all right. Got you. So difficulty is four. Um, you've got the momentum. You're burning that one momentum to do what with it? Add oh. an extra die. Yeah. Add an extra die. Correct. Okay. Then go ahead and make your roll. Difficulty is four. You got yeah. the assist. Sally Wright can and assist as well. And she can use her focus, yes. Mm -hmm. And I'm rolling on uh, reason science. That's no. Uh, you gonna? I'm gonna have you roll on. Yeah, reason science. I'll have you both roll the same <laughs> thing. And I will. Uh, yeah, set you the difficulty of four, and you right? also get your focus. Yeah, yeah reason so. medicine or reason. Reason medicine. Yeah, sorry. You're reason science. You're reason medicine. I have one success. All right, so let's see what Throlo gets. <gasps> oh, mm, te mm, technically. Uh, what are the spends for? Uh, <laughs> did, you roll? did you succeed? Okay, so what did you roll? Uh, she got 
At present, I have uh, one, uh, two successes, one of which is uh, the one success doubled. Uh, and then I've got two complications. Um, then this isn't going to work. Unless, Unless. To, like she can roll. Wait, wait, you got two successes? Yeah. And you got one success. So and Sally total. got a success. And Sally got so a success. Four, so you get your four, so but you get two complications. With did, two you roll complications. A, did you roll a 20? I rolled two, two 20s. 20s. Um, but the one oh, roll, one roll was really good. Can I spend a re-roll? Don't you have a total to for that? If you use your determination, I can have a total. Then you can right? selectively re-roll. Selectively. Okay. Yes. If you would like to get what? rid of the. Yeah. What's up, Elisa? Uh, I I don't know if uh, as an assisting person I can use this, but my technical that technical expertise says whenever you attempt a task at, assisted by the ship's computers or sensors, you may reroll one d twenty, which may be the ship's die. Does it? Yeah. Does that require a momentum spend? No. Then yeah, you can so. do it. All right, so we get at least one. If we want just one complication no. and fully succeed. So what? Yeah, can I? Since I assisted, can she use that? For no. Oh, this okay. is this is you. But well, are you I could determ- try. Do I have a determination better. right now? So yeah. your determination, exactly. in order to use your determination, you're going to have to find a value. Now, I don't imagine that's going to be too hard here. You help who you can where you can. What's that? You help who you can where you can. What, other, what are your other values? Uh, bring on the next emergency. Uh, Starfleet is where I belong, and Thrillo loves a mystery. Oh. I mean, uh, Thrillo loves a mystery. You could yeah, totally, good yeah, Thrillo loves yeah. a mystery is good. Yeah. <laughs> you're like Scooby-Doo. Um, yeah. <laughs> Jinkies. Ruh-roh. That's, Ruh-roh. A that's it's just a good blanket. Focus to have. I think the first one applies more. You help who you can where you can. Yeah, uh, that's where I am emotionally right now. Yeah, is so go ahead and draw a line through that it. This thing is dead. Yep, go, go ahead and draw a line through that, and uh, you've called upon that value, so you now are going to get that determination spent. So that allows you to, am I correct, erase uh, the complications? I'm not selectively re-roll those dice. Okay, so you get to pick which dice just you re-roll the here. complication dice or Wait. whatever isn't a success. I'm going to roll the two twenties. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Rather than have the one auto crit and still keep the yeah. two. Yes. Um, but yeah. Right, so go ahead and roll. I think that's so two. Solid. So we still we've still have already yeah, succeeded. Still so we still have four successes already. We're running already. up the score now. But we're yeah. we're trying to get rid of the complications. Run up the score. Yeah. Save the two more successes. Watch yeah. this. <laughs> Ooh. All right. Uh, Crit, crit. Yeah, actual crit, legit crit. crit, crit. crit. Uh, two successes. Two successes. So a total of four from me, five, six. So, so you build two momentum, so and that's you succeed. Good re-roll. Yeah. So we had four, and, we and, have an additional and you two. have two additional crits. crits. But no, she just crits? got one crit. Okay, one crit. And one, f- not so success. three additional well, successes. No, an additional two okay. successes. Okay. Yeah. Right. She, one was I rolled a, an 18 and a one. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. So we are now at two momentum which you can pull or spend immediately. And we get a bonus momentum on obtaining information from the advanced research facility. That's correct. And science officer, right? Uh, no, because no, Amy's, oh, okay. Amy's taking the lead on this. Okay, so the Sally Rides Research Station will definitely give you a bonus question. Great. Uh, with that momentum spend, if you ask for more. So with the help of your science officer, first of all, I should tell you, Talon, that this is why you are out here. <laughs> you, uh, they brought an alien life that has never before been encountered. Not only that, but this one genetically is a complete anomaly. <laughs> and, I'm as excited as I can appear to be. Um, what does that look like? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> God, that was good. <laughs> yeah, that was good. I saw a hint of a smile, maybe. Uh-huh. <laughs> I can't even not. <laughs> All right, it's too exciting. Aliza's too excited too. So, <laughs> it is taken. It basically, you, you, not, neither one of you have slept much, um, as you have studied this creature, and what you, det- what you discover is that there is some. There is an unknown matter sub, uh, an unknown matrix in the matter of this creature that you've never seen before. Um, it doesn't appear on any Starfleet database, but there is a material in the genetics of this creature itself that is p- probably the cause of its rapid evolution. Um, Eliza. You feel like, with, with someone with your encyclopedic knowledge of scientific inquiry, you have a vague idea of what this could be. You're not 100% sure, but there is something, it's one of those moments where 
you feel like maybe you've seen this somewhere before in your studies long, long time ago. Long time ago. Um, the data that's coming in would suggest that it follows a pattern of something that you've crossed paths with before, but you don't have a name for it. But it does feel hauntingly familiar. And um, you said the mate there's a the, material in its, what was that? The, the, the genetic material, the matter inside the genetic, genetic material. Mm -hmm. There's a matter in the material itself that is foreign and uh, it seems familiar to you. Like you've seen this data before but you're not able to place where you've seen it okay. or what it is. Um, and that's what causes its uh, that's what accelerated I'm evolution. That's what you can piece together. Okay. Whatever it is, it's very likely the cause of its accelerated uh, evolutionary abilities. Okay. Um, what you can confirm, Throlo, from studying this thing with the remarkable successes you just scored, um, what you can confirm is that this creature was probably judging. You're you're basically able to find a point on which to trace back how long this creature existed, uh, and and sort of overlay that with how fast it evolved. And what you get is it probably was about seventy years old or so. It probably began an evolutionary track uh, about the same time that 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 facility was first built. Um, however. Because of the evolutionary anomaly of this creature, it has evolved. This thing was the way it's, it's rapidly cycling on a level we've never seen. This 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 life form was more advanced than all of you. This creature, it, it, the only the only its only weakness was is that it becomes so dependent on its very own ecosystem that this huge life form could never have existed outside of that cave. Um, at least not at the rapid weight in which it was extracted. There was the, you, the one thing you are able to realize as you're studying this, the data, is that it was, for lack of a better way of putting it, a no-win scenario. If you had had more time, maybe. But with the black hole incoming and you guys having to leave, you're more assured now that beaming out of there with this creature was your, your best shot. And at the very least, you've managed to preserve it. <coughs> the galaxy will know that it existed. Um, also studying this thing, even though you are having to reference known species, you're certain that it was sentient and that it was probably capable of it, thought and possibly even the ability to question itself um, whatever this creature was, it was very much alive and cognizant. And that puts its behavior in context for both of you as well. Because you get the feeling that it was just as curious about you as you were about it. Um, and as you kind of pull away from the scanner and all of this, after like a day and a half of constant research and studying, you realize you had... Throlo has a moment of realization um, that just like you, this thing came in peace. I knew all of this. You don't know how it existed, how it was created, why it was there, but you were probably the first life forms it ever encountered. A story begins to get told here as you're looking at all the data. Um, again, with four successes, um, if you want to burn the momentum, it was six successes. Uh, if you want to burn one of the momentum, um, I'll give you a question. You get that. You get two questions, I believe, right? You get a bonus yeah. question because of the research. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and ask, and then... Uh, no, the, that one we just get. We don't even have to spend momentum. Right. Oh, okay. You just get it. So would yeah. you like to ask any questions about the creature before we go? Can the shoots be replanted? Um, you are not aware of any technique or medical knowledge for a creature this foreign and this advanced to be saved this long after death. There is no known medical technique.
if you could spend more time with it? Possibly. I mean, again, it is plant life, which is remarkably resilient. Um, it, it, but th- that, th- this could take months of research. Well, we've tasked an area of sick bay with a... Uh we're building out a tank with a reproduction as best we can of the like broad nutrient mix and materials from the cave. We're working it. Okay. We're going to go ahead and pause there, I think, because it's 11 o'clock, so we're going to take our break. Oh. But let's make the break quicker tonight than it normally is. Are you okay. guys cool with that? Yes. So that because we took a little long in our announcements and we got to wrap okay. up a season here. So and I don't want to keep the crew late again. So let's just let's just go get some quick no, refreshment and get back over board. here. <clears throat> oh, that's true. That's true. Oh. So we have to. <laughs> we have to uh, so we're gonna make this break pretty yeah. quick. Um, go ahead and stay tuned and stay active in chat. We're gonna have the giveaway codes for yeah, Star Trek wait. Online, and uh, we will see you guys back here in about five-ish minutes or so. Okay, see you then. Hey, welcome back from our break here on Shield of Tomorrow. It's funny because uh, we were trying to make this a quick break, and actually, all we did was actually make it the ten minutes it's always supposed to be, <laughs> which is perfect. Yeah, that was ten minutes. Yeah, can you believe that? We're oh well, no, technically it was eight minutes, but whatever. Okay, it is. that that we makes a difference. Up. That's true. We 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 did we did technically come back faster. Um, um, yeah, we're back, but you can jump in there. Mm-hmm. Sure, no, go ahead, go deliver tea. Because uh, we, we took a quick break. Tanova, everybody. Hey. Thank you, Tanova. Hey. Honorary hey. crew member Tanova, hey. ladies and gentlemen. Um, <laughs> all right, so we do have a winner. <laughs> Here's the story. Well, it's dim, yeah. you know, I'm making <laughs> exception. While we, were at a, while we were at break, uh, Captain Martinez decided to look at that crew list for the Ox crew and discovered that there was a stowaway on board the Sally Ride. Oh. I'm going to look into that. I, I, I wasn't aware of that. I'm like, what? Isn't that awful? We better address that next episode, Eric. <laughs> Somebody's so, getting booted off, unless they're as lovely as Denova, in which case then maybe we'll make an keep exception. Him. There is, uh, <laughs> however, uh, Jake Gord, you just got yourself a temporal agent pack <laughs> from Star Trek Online. Ooh, um, so congratulations to Jake Gore. Uh, that's pretty rad. Um, we'll get that out to you. Um, <laughs> our, our, our fleet, um, real quick, if anybody doesn't know, uh, our fleet on Star Trek Online is, of course, Shield of Tomorrow. We have a sister fleet that I just joined up with <clears throat> uh, called Sword of Tomorrow, which is the Klingon fleet. Yes. I'm a big fan. <laughs> um, You're great. a fan of the Klingon thing? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, my, my main <laughs> has joined up with that. And yes, Zazrit actually does exist in Star Trek Online. She's I created Zazrit about four years ago on that video game and decided to use it as an NPC in this game. <gasps> Are you freaking kidding me? No, Do so I, Zazrit, Zazrit really? exists in Star Trek Online. Zazrit. Although the spelling was wrong, unfortunately. I, when they asked me the name of the episode, I gave them not the spelling that I used on Star Trek Online, but anyway. Maybe it's a translation yeah, thing. Yeah, it's yeah, a translation thing. Translation, like, Can we get like a, a picture of this Zazrit? Do you want me to send you guys a picture? It's not anything you look like. He has an eye patch and a scar. It, it's like, it's not. It's he, not what I described he, here. It's like a younger version of, descri- of Zazrin on this on this show. Oh. But it's a quick oh, change. Really? Yeah, <laughs> you're like, fresh. oh, young and fresh. Um, stupid fashed up Zazrin. <laughs> stupid fashed up fashed up Zazrin. Um, just gonna be sexy. All right, so let's go ahead and jump back into tonight's game. Um, so during this whole research uh, endeavor, as you guys are moving into, uh, I would say, day two of analyzing this creature. Uh, I'm going to cut to a scene now in the galley um, with our new chief, Mala Ren, walking in uh, off duty. Um, at this hour on the ship, uh, a lot of people are coming on for the night shift. Um, so there's not a lot of people in the galley. The occasional people just catching up on reports you see at the tables and whatnot. But most notably, sitting off as he sometimes does, um, looking out over the stars, um, as y'all are at warp, is Jiv, who is by himself with a data pad near him. Um, he is obviously off duty as well as the front of his uniform is opened up casually, and he's got his bulky boots kicked up onto the chair that's next to him, and he's just facing out towards the window. And it looks like the tables are empty around him as well. It's almost like people who come down to the galley know to leave the chief engineer alone when he's grimacing or when he is emoting 
needs a cream soda. Yeah. When he's brooding, as Spike would say on in, on uh, Buffy. Yeah. So, yeah. I sit down across from him. <laughs> you just <laughs> sit down. And I place a cup in front of him. Okay. With a cup in my hand as well. He looks over at it, and he doesn't say a word. He just takes it, and you see the data pad laying on, on the on the table. It's addressed to him. Um, he doesn't seem to care that you see it. As you set the cup down, he just keeps looking out the window, um, reading it upside down. Not too difficult. It's in big print, but it's congratulating him on all of his years of service and informing them that his retirement is now officially in effect upon return of Starbase 138. No. He's, he's just staring out the window. He's not saying anything. <laughs> Retiring? He doesn't respond. He just keeps gazing out the window. Let's fight it. I don't have to retire. I don't have to fight this. I could say no. Then say no. Easy. There's a beat. And then he slowly turns and looks back out the window again without saying anything. All right, listen, I... I... You don't gotta be special to know you've been feeling weird, okay? Everyone can see it. Yeah. What's up? You know, before Sally Ride pulled into 138, I was ready to get out. Yeah, who wasn't? No, I mean, get out of the uniform. Leave this all behind. I was done. Did I ever tell you I used to be a commander? No. I was demoted about six years ago. Disciplinary action, they said. I was part of the team that helped design the warp cores on these Intrepid class. The promise was is that once they started sailing, I'd get to be on one. It is a strange place that fate takes us. So what? You were a commander. I was a farmer. Who cares what we used to be? It's what we want to be now. I was demoted for doing the right thing. I'd played it by the book. I saw something that was wrong. I stood up and I said something about it and I lost. And I got demoted. Starfleet betrayed me. I lost my commission. I got shunted around from place to place. And then I got dumped on 138. I mean, it was just happenstance that the Sally Ride pulled into dock. Someone gave me a chance. I don't yeah, know. yeah, and you gave me a chance. Where's this going? I don't know if I want to stay. Why not? Come on, the ship needs you. It's not the ship, it's Starfleet. I got a problem with Starfleet. I've always had a problem with Starfleet. I got screwed. I grew up with an idea of a future, <laughs> an idea of how this worked, a trust in the chain of command. I was idealistic, I was driven. I was building ships with my bare hands. I put a warp core together. I, I helped design this. <laughs> For what? I just got thrown that in my face because I had the audacity to do my duty. And I can't even talk about it. Can't even bring it up. It's a black mark on my record. Not even the captain knows. And if he goes asking, he's probably going to get a reprimand for it. Because the person I called out has got that kind of rank. So you're quitting. Quitting? I quit six years ago. They wouldn't let me leave. And now the papers have come in, and I don't know what I want to do. I don't know what I want to do. I didn't have a home. I wasn't expecting the Sally Ride to come along. I found a home. I haven't made up my mind yet. 
You just said it, man. It's your home. Where are you gonna go? I don't know. What are we supposed to do without you? What do you mean? You've done just fine before you met me. <laughs> yeah, sure. Wallowing in the pits of base 38. Doing just great. Yeah, look. Yeah, okay, I was a stepping stone, and I'm glad I could help you out, because I know potential when I see it. But yeah, I do step on people, don't I? Yeah, on occasion. <clears throat> but that's, that's why we need you. I haven't Who made up my mind. going to keep me in line? <laughs> Commander Rue will keep you in line if you don't keep that attitude in check. <laughs> yeah. That trill takes a specific delight in making sure everyone knows exactly what the uniform code is. I have is. no intention of getting beat up by Commander Rue. <laughs> they won't beat you up. They'll make you feel like you got beaten up. They won't beat you up. Either way, emotionally or physically. <laughs> nah, they're all right. I like the Commander. They remind me of a Tellarite, to be honest with you. A little bit taller. They seem very capable. It's a weird crew, kiddo. I'm not gonna lie. But I will say this. I've been in Starfleet for almost 30 years. Something about the Sally Ride. She's got the makings of greatness about her. If I didn't feel that way, I wouldn't be conflicted right now. Ship the only reason you're conflicted? I don't know. I got used to hating this uniform. I didn't know that I had fallen in love again until this order came through. I don't know what I'm gonna do. But I got a day to figure it out. A day? According to the order, I am supposed to resign my commission and enter retirement upon arrival at Starbase 138. We're a day out. Let's not talk about this anymore. There's something else I gotta talk to you about as it is. There's been Great. some more good news. Yeah, there's been some. I had to apologize to an ensign this morning. I yeah. thought they were messing with the dilithium chamber, but it turns out it's actually a problem with some of the. <sighs> it's just a problem. Tomorrow morning, I've got to go into the Jeffrey's tubes, and I need somebody I trust to go in there with me. Might be the last time I'd crawl through the Sally's guts. You mind, uh... Don't even say another word. And it's easy enough for me, but you tall types, you don't like crawling around in that thing. <laughs> it's the best part of my day, usually. Well, tomorrow we're going to be running a three-hour diagnostic on the ionic field dampener, so... Drink coffee. <laughs> Thanks for this. And he downs the whole thing, and then he puts the cup down. That wasn't coffee. No, I don't know what the hell that was. And he stands <laughs> up and he he takes the the data pad and he stops and he goes, "Ren, don't don't tell the others about this. All right? It's my business." Yeah, my word. And sir. He turns and jiv. <laughs> he gets a few sirs as he walks by a few of the ins and he just kind of waves them off. And you see the old engineer walk out the galley door. Better see you tomorrow, old man. Um, I don't like this at all. We are going to cut to... Uh, <laughs> the next day, you guys are a few hours out from Starbase 138. Okay. Um, 
you meet up with Jiv in engineering. He you go ahead. He heads you off immediately, Ren. And as he approaches, you walk in with your engineering kit. He's already to go. And he's <clears> given a few directions to a lieutenant, and then he turns to you and he goes, "Don't even ask if I've made up my mind yet. <clears throat> technically, I'm not. Technically, I'm still an officer until I disembark. So, let's just work the problem. Then we can talk later. To the guts. All right." And the both of you crawl into the Jeffrey's tube. He just <laughs> takes down the thing and climbs up the ladder and looks down that long hallway, <laughs> <laughs> that long little tube. Yep. And he says, why do they put metal gratings on this thing? They know officers crawl on their hands and knees and gets up in here and is freaking going to install padding or something. It's ridiculous. All the design flaws and kind of, you see he's crawling. He accidentally, with his beard, which has gotten a little bit longer, he kind of put, he accidentally kind of catches himself and it's like, and. Told you to braid it. Uh, and the two of you enter the Jeffrey's tube. Um, cutting to the bridge, uh, Captain, up on the main view screen, you see Starbase 138 coming into view as you all leave warp. Uh, you drop out of warp. <laughs> Starbase 138 looks different. And the mm. time that you have been away... Which has been how long? Um, I would say it's probably... Uh, I would say probably close to two, two, three months. Okay. You guys have been out in space doing your thing. Um, it's been a, been, been a while since the first episode. <laughs> Um, you guys. Was it 138 for our weapons refit a few episodes later? No, uh, no that, that was, was DS. That was Deep Five. Space. DS5. Thank DS5, you. that's yes. right, yeah. Deep Space you guys, 5. DS5, you guys had a weapons refit so there. I want a couple of things to have happened in the past sure. few yeah. days. Sure. To what you was, let uh, me know what we can gloss over, and you let me know what can still happen or whatever we need to okay. have happen. Yeah, fire Number away. one priority Martinez will have tried to decipher that data. I want to know what's on there. Um. What okay. do we get? What do I find out? Thank what you for bringing that back up. Out? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, it, the Sally Ride would have no problem deciphering the data. Um, well, I need to recruit Ensign Sage because honestly, I'm at a point now where it's like plausible deniability. The less anybody else knows, the better. I don't want to um, get people in. Like, your I'm not command codes as captain will give you access to the data on that's been encrypted on here. Password. I am a captain. <laughs> <laughs> I am oh, captain. Really? That's not um, like that's oh, shit, did I say that I love? Yeah. Did I say that I love? Um, <laughs> um, there is. <laughs> so a lot the of this data has been corrupted. <laughs> okay. Um, a lot of it's been corrupted. There are fragments of data that you can pick up, even pieces of personal logs. Um, I'm also for, looking for dates, mm -hmm. and I'm going to cross-reference those dates with like the public dates of the life of. James T. Kirk. Okay, and, so you're running a whole project in your Ooh. in your. Okay, the past few days yeah. have been a so while they're yarn yeah. up on yeah, my wall like, like you like as well. Wait a minute. It's, <laughs> it's like the captain has been excusing themselves rather yes. frequently from the bridge mm -hmm. and get and give it. Like, Rue, you've spent more time center chair in the past two days than you've ever spent, and uh, at this prolonged of a period. Um, the captain has relinquished full command of the ship to you multiple occasions now, fulfilling the essential roles and then immediately giving it to his first officer. Um, He's a happy nerd. <laughs> yeah. I'm just sitting in my chair and all of a sudden I'm like, You've been losing sleep. Steady Alpha 5. And then I go back to my room and I'm like, Wait a minute, wait a oh minute. Oh my god, Steady Alpha 5. Um, I so captain, I have the bridge. <laughs> the pieces of information that you're able to put together, yeah. um, not a lot of it sheds light on what happened <coughs> after. Uh, the events that took place at uh, at regular one. Mm -hmm. um, you do catch a few key moments. Uh, there are a few pieces of data entry where it refers to a USS Reliant um, that is apparently working under the authorization of a then Admiral James T. Kirk, James T. Kirk. to come and retrieve the Genesis device. Um, and again, it refers to the Genesis device as a torpedo. Um, there's a scientist that does make mention that there's concern because it's completely um, unauthorized to be doing this. Starfleet mm -hmm. was supposed to be helping them find a suitable planet. They were not supposed to be subservient to Starfleet. Mm -hmm. And it was supposed to take another six to eight months for this project to move forward. So there's a lot of suspicion. It cuts ahead. You do find some data, uh, a personal log entry from David where um, his last entry um, is shards, fragments, but you're able to piece together um, his rage 
mm-hmm. that Starfleet has once to, again, yeah, yeah, that the Reliant is coming to take away Genesis, that in the hands of the wrong people, that this weapon, that this torpedo, which was meant to be a scientific endeavor, mm-hmm. could conceivably be one of the most horrific weapons the galaxy has ever seen. Thank you. Do I have that little video that describes what Genesis is and does, that little presentation video? No, that is not present. Ooh, that would have been gold. <laughs> yeah. oh, that is not oh, present. You would have been such a happy camp. But still, the fact that David Marcus said... David Marcus this, explicitly this states his anxieties about Reliant taking this device because of what Starfleet could do with it. Mm-hmm. And he believes, as he, as he says time and time again, that once again this proves that scientists are always pawns of the military. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay. Now, can I, the, one of the other, f- of the four things I wanted to do is do a little research on the piece of the Enterprise that was in the cargo bay. Classified. You, classified. You're, when you're trying to bring up where the Enterprise. Dates, dates of like you know, carbon dating, whatever we can do to figure out when that fight explosion happened. You To try can, to line it up. Um, let me put it this way. Mm-hmm. At this level, you could, this... This is enough that you could you could use your access codes to, to pull up some of this information, but it might tip off Starfleet that you're looking. Okay. I'm not going to do You can do it. Because I'm already under a watchful eye. I'm already under a watchful eye. You're all being I wanted to do, but you could access the data. All I wanted to do was look at the wreckage, mm-hmm. try to figure out exactly the like how long it's been in space from the from the point of the, you know, the fight, I guess, if I, if it's possible, maybe to look at some damage or whatever on the piece of the ship. Do you want to make a roll and see to try to put things together, or? Um, I mean, yeah, I can do that. That's like a, another computer thing. I actually. would say that that is a reason. Just want to try to get a, a bit of a clearer picture. I have somewhat I, of a picture, but I would say that's a reason con roll. Reason con, ooh, not great. All right, or, let's try it. Or you know, actually, I'll let this be a command roll. Because so you are using your command. access as a captain to sort of put together data that's not normally available to other people. Can I use one of my... Uh, you can use the Sally Ride to assist. You can use her computer systems. I'll do that. Can I also use one of my talents? Uh, what is it? Um, history buff. Oh, focus. Studious is the focus. It, what is, Studious. What is, what is history buff? Oh, you mean your focus. You're using focus. Focus, yes. focus, focus. Absolutely. That would totally apply here. I will use a focus. All right. My focus is studious, which I have uh, written to mean history buff, because uh, I'm a student of history. But the focus is when you obtain information, you can ask another freebie question. That's, That's all right. So, Sally Ride's good at this. What did you just eat, right. wasabi or something? Yes, you did. I had a feeling. That looks like wasabi face. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't watching, but I could I, tell. I have wa- avocado in here, and I thought it was a junk avocado. It was, <laughs> it was wasabi. wasabi. Gina's got wasabi Ooh. face. Ooh. Ooh. Do you have um, one? It's good more. Uh, that would be... Mm, I don't I like think that would be... Oh, yeah, I did. Good job. Let me look at... Because presumably so. she's like doing... Um, this would be... What is it? Potassium argon dating for non-organic. Um, that sounds correct to me. No, you're doing. You're doing. You're trying to piece together information like puzzle pieces, right? So I'm going to say this would be a command. Uh, this would be computer security. Computer security. All right. Uh, okay, bad news, y'all. <laughs> it's not what Sally Wright's good at, but if only Sally you could use my collaboration talent. <laughs> All right. The, uh, let me go ahead and tell you the difficulty is going to be three on this. If I'm okay. using, um, it's when you, you use a. Use uh, uh, um, well, this is technically, by the way, another scene. Mm-hmm. Okay. So okay. I'm going to subtract one oh, momentum from your pool. Um, Even though it's the focus. next day, I'm so going to say one, it's, two, a, it's another scene. We're good. So. What was the uh, difficulty? Difficulty is three. Yeah, we made it. So since I, I, I rolled a two, but I used a focus. Then that counts as a critical. So you got yeah. two successes three, off that, too. Three, Great. Three. Boom. Boom. So three successes. Boom. Got it. Three successes. Um, okay. So. Um, Did that piece of ship come from that fight that happened right after? Um. You the spend a few regular. hours trying to correlate when the fight happened, how it happened, um, what took place based off of the debriefing notes that Kirk um, made available to Starfleet mm-hmm. and what you would have at your level. And by the time you are done um, researching, what you're able to piece together is that this piece of damaged ship probably did not come from the Battle of the Khan. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. It did not happen in the, in the fight with uh, Khan. In my report, I'm also going to um, 
informally request if it's not any trouble for me as a souvenir to retain a piece of the ship. But I'm giving the entire thing sure. to Starfleet. And, re- and remember, it is a simple task if you want to request information as to where this where the Enterprise was officially lost. Oh, yeah. Because it is in know. public record, but it is connected to the Genesis. Public event. record, but it is connected to the Genesis. Uh, yeah, I'll do that then as my, my bonus follow-up As your bonus? Okay. Yeah. The USS Enterprise, mm-hmm. the refit, was officially lost in the Mutara sector. Mm-hmm. Um, it in apparently the Mutara inc- Nebula. It, 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 it apparently, um, the, the Mutara sector, details about the Mutara sector are classified. Mm. Um, judging by what you know, um, it probably had something to do with Project Genesis. Um, but what you discover is, is the USS Enterprise was lost in the Mutara sector, apparently after a conflict with a Klingon bird of prey, in which the captain of the ship, the USS Enterprise, which at the time, by the way, was stolen yes. from space dock. Yes. Mm. Um, Who would do apparently, that? Apparently, after stealing the USS Enterprise for reasons that are not specified here, um, Kirk initiated a self-destruct protocol which blew up the Enterprise, killing almost the entire crew of the Klingon Bird of Prey in a boarding action. And this is around the time David Marcus dies. Um, it correlates. It correlates. Right with so I'm the piecing that together. I'm like, Marcus. this this revenge mission, whatever happened, probably had to do with the fact that Jim Kirk's son was in danger or got killed. These events like, um, all are connected very close in the, in the timeline, yes. And how, and fl- final question about the l- lore, mm-hmm. how much public knowledge is the resurrection of Ambassador Spock? Like, like... It's not very public. It's not necessarily because they were hiding it, but at the same time, it's also kind of, they, they couldn't hide that. Do you know exactly. what I mean? Exactly. He like, was recorded record, lost. He died. Um, however... It's one of those areas where it gets really tricky because his resurrection has everything to do with Project Genesis. So again, yeah. you come and, running and into walls. Vulcan mysticism. Yeah, so I don't it know doesn't, how. It does yeah. not specify. Would Talon know anymore about it's, the legend it, of Spock? It's very likely. Spock is a pretty iconic figure on and Vulcan. And I can't ask him right now because he's on Romulus. Like he's undercover. Spock right has now. gone. Spock. Um, he's off the grid. He. Right at this particular point, unification. I think, yes, I think at this particular point in the Star Trek timeline, I think, uh, I think uh, reunification. Those episodes in TNG have already happened. Yeah. So, um, but I will say this: it's probably classified that Spock is on Romulus. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Damn it! You know that's oh that is gosh. that is top brass information that probably you, know, you would not be accessed. So, as far as you know, yeah. this it, may not be canon, but I do want to mention this: that right, so. um, Jean Luc Picard did reach out to his friend, Ambassador Spock, after he found the body of James T. Kirk to let him know. And there's a comic book that shows Spock going to the planet where Kirk's body was and retrieving his remains and bringing it back to Iowa and burying him. Oh. I want to know what comic that is. Yeah. That I'll let fantastic. you borrow it. He does that. <laughs> that sounds fantastic. Spock goes, like, he leaves Romulus a for a while just to do that and then to come back. So, I, I, so I'm, I'm super picky about expanded universe stuff, but, but that, that is, sounds great. Well, good stuff. Um, so that's what you're able to uncover. Well, oh, my gosh. Just as a point of order relating to all of that, mm-hmm. <laughs> just in case our captain's request was not approved, I did arrange that we did a hollow, <laughs> a hollow scan oh. of the remnant nice. so that even if we don't get a physical piece, he'll be able to, yeah. Okay. It's programmed. Sure. Yeah. To, look to, um, to go into the holodeck and like lift it and like and look at ha- it. And just happy stuff. nerd moments. A scan, you can actually, for, you for can actually, with a scan, you're actually able to determine that it came from the saucer section of the ship. Wow. Is there any, there, is there any lettering on it? Mm-mm. No, right? Oh, Nothing. Would have been too much to ask. No, but it, Final it's... last two things that are not super priority. Okay, what's yeah. up? I wanted to have uh, Martinez have a meeting with Commander Rue about Jiv, just to do a little powwow. I don't know how important that is, but like they're going to bring me up to speed with what's going on with Jiv. We can say that that happened. Yeah, that happened. narratively, if you guys just want to say that you had a conversation Ooh. and you got on the same page about Jiv's behavior. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And yeah. then the last, very last thing, non-priority, but I would like to have set up a... a uh, an official thank you for um, to uh, Chief Ren. Okay. Just for me to be like, hey, thanks for uh, finding that, and for finding and helping to find us. Yeah. But also thank Essentially, you. Essentially, you get acknowledged by the captain of the Sally yeah, Ride. Yeah, yeah. Um, captain Martinez. Is that a note? 
What's no, that? like face to face. Like I oh. will, I will find you, and <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. We can say uh, before yeah. before the incident. And it went great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. And so you got so much. Chill. So you now I know it. Imagine it, it was chill. you came. Where 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 did you confront me? Was um, I an engineer? I don't know if it was a confront. It was more like maybe I, I would have even I'm done sure it. it felt like a con- I, I I picture you guys I just. Mean, I picture yeah. the two of you in a turbo lift, and you just kind of like. By the way, um, thanks for. <laughs> that could happen. Here's what happened. Um, day two, after we're rested, I looked at my shit pieces. I looked at my data. Everybody's <laughs> rested up. Day two, I threw a request to Chief Friend, be like, Hey, after hours, uh, meet me at the bar. Okay. So that I, so that I, so that Captain, personal request of your presence. Bought her a drink to be like, thank you for. Just asked me out on a date. (laughs) (laughs) No. (laughs) What did you say to him? What? Nothing. I just told him what you did. He's a huge fan of history. Oh. Yeah. All right. (laughs) I love that nobody else on this ship gives a shit about. (laughs) <laughs> Any of the stuff I care about. Great. Yeah, Tellarite's just like, yeah. yeah it's I, great that you're so excited. <laughs> <laughs> I really yeah, yeah Kirk, yay. <laughs> okay. I could tell you some great names in Tellarite history, but you wouldn't care either. Even so. in the future. It's just a side piece of the That's what you care. That's what you care. You're on a nerd ship. <laughs> Did the, the octave, uh, the wait, octave wait, tones. Wait, wait, wait. Did, wait, any, did any of the Tellarite heroes uh, save the galaxy multiple times? <laughs> oh. Oh. Even in the future, oh. I'm a nerd. Probably not because uh, most of Starfleet I'll was human back then. Time. Yeah, I'm weirded out like I'm the token jock. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, it's super weird. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll cut then to Starbase 138 and keep that momentum because this is the scene that you guys were headed into when I had you pull one out. Um, but... Uh, but uh, you're pulling into Starbase 138, and as I said, it, Starbase 138 has um, almost completely finished completion, which, by the way, almost completely finished completion. Let's analyze that sentence. The Starbase construction has almost been completed, and uh, which is an incredible feat of engineering unto itself. Uh, when you last left this place, it was, it was what it was. It was... Terribly, it was a skeleton. It was terribly overweight. It looked awful. This looked awful, <laughs> um, and it was completely disorganized. Um, but as you approach the starbase, um, uh, it's not the size of Starbase One, which is the main starbase out here, but it is a very large starbase of the same size shape. Um, uh, not the same size, but the same sort of make of the, of the Starbase One. So as you guys are pulling into space dock, you of course go through all the procedures. Um, you tractor beamed in. Starfleet Command welcomes you back home. USS Sally Ride. Um, the uh, tractor beam takes controls, and as y'all are pulling into dock, there is actually another ship in here. It's not the Akira class, but there is a Steam Runner class vessel. Which, by the way, just like the Akira class, Steam Runner is technically a warship. So this will be the second one you've seen. And the Steam Runner class, um, I'll just tell the, especially you, Rue, would know this, um, as well as you, Captain. Uh, the Steam Runner class was a ship that was specifically built and designed to help combat the Borg threat. And it was at the Battle of, of Wolf 359. In fact, this very vessel from the registry you can see on it uh, is the USS Appalachia, which was at the Battle of Wolf. Um, the Steam Runner class is a hell of a ship. She is an escort style um, class vessel. And um, a lot of what Starfleet puts into the Steam Runner focuses a lot around, think of the Steam Runner as sort of a very agile, um, a very agile trebuchet in space. It's particularly good at delivering high payloads of torpedoes at long range. Um, they, there was talk in Starfleet about discontinuing its service um, not too long after the Battle of Wolf 359. Why? Um, just because the at that particular point the fleet they they decided that they need their fleet needed to be rebuilt because yeah. of how many ships were lost so they started allocating their resources not towards the small escort ships but trying to get back some of their heavier cruisers so Starfleet kind of put a halt to that it was the same with the Defiant USS Defiant was put on mothballs um, a lot of the war class style ships they weren't decommissioned but more were not put into production. Um, because the the heaviest losses came from somewhere the the larger ships, when the Borg sailed in there under the command of Locutus and it promptly destroyed half the fleet. <laughs> so, um, 
so pulling into Space Dock and seeing a steam runner, the Appalachia is kind of, it's just a little convenient to see another warship stationed here, a Starbase 138. Um, pulling into Space Dock, uh, you immediately receive a uh, notification uh, to receive uh, an admiral as well as an a intelligence escort. And to we stand by. On board the ship. Mm -hmm. They're coming on board. Okay. okay. Um, <clears throat> I will be sure to greet them in the Senior staff should probably room. all congregate yep. at the transporter room. Okay. Um, you are sitting there at the transporter controls, and Jiv walks in first, and he goes, <clears throat> get ready, here comes the brass. <sighs> um, and as he stands waiting and people start to filter into the room, he goes, when we're done here, let's head back down to Jeffrey's tube and finish our work. Whatever you say. Um, you all begin to filter in, <clears throat> and you receive notification from the Starbase that they're ready for transport. Yeah. Um, Spit on the wall there for something for me. <laughs> <clears throat> that blue glow as um, six figures appear in the transporter pad. You see um, a very handsome Japanese man standing at the front of the transporter pad in uh, full dress uniform. He has the bars of a vice admiral, and behind him is uh, looks like a cap somebody of a captain and commander rank, and behind them looks like um, what could be best described as operational chiefs, but they are, without a doubt, um, judging by the equipment that they're carrying, they look like they might be his personal sort of security entourage. Um, you recognize him, uh, Hector, because he is, the, in fact... Um, this Fujisaki. yes, Fujisaki. this is yeah. Vice Admiral Fujisaki. Um, Fujisaki is the head of Starfleet Intelligence. What? Yeah, he is essentially in charge of Starfleet Intel. And to have to see him appear on the transporter pad is a big surprise. Oh, yeah. um, even though down. I received an encoded message from him. You certainly didn't expect to find him out here. Here, got it. Yes. At Starbase. He was either okay. out here already, or he made it a point to be here when you got here. Mm -hmm. um, he says, permission to come aboard, Captain. Welcome aboard, Vice Admiral. He steps down, and he nods to his men. He says, Captain, these uh, people are with me. They serve Starfleet Intelligence. They have full authorization to scan both your computer banks and remove the creature that you have in sickbay. I'm sorry. The Admiral looks at you. Ah. Uh, Dr. Shasiros, I believe? Yes. Apologies, Vice Admiral. We didn't receive any orders that you would be uh, removing the life form that we found. I understand. Perhaps we should uh, continue this discussion in my ready room. Very well. Thank Proceed. you. Proceed. Um, the intelligence officers immediately begin to move out of the transporter room. And without another word to you, the Admiral walks past you and follows the Captain. Do they look like they're headed for my sick bay or like yes. they're headed for the ready room? No, they're headed for your sick bay. Same, same direction. I follow them. Okay, you follow after them. Um, you, by the way, have this, this um, as he walks past you uh, and the rest of you, he, he says, Commander, would you please join us? Um, and as you're all walking, one of the things you've all noticed is none of you have been given permission to disembark yet. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it's almost like everyone's being held on the ship for the moment. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Moments later, you walk into your ready room. And we're not with them. It's just the captain. No, it's just and the captain commander. and the room. Yeah. You walk into the ready room, and uh, Vice Admiral Fujisaki um, follows you in. Uh, Rue, you follow in behind him. Uh, as you sit down at your desk, uh, Fujisaki doesn't sit down. He walks over and immediately just starts looking around at your ready room and just kind of nods like he's inspecting the place. Well, as I'm sure you're familiar, Vice Admiral, we, uh, we had quite a, 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 an adventure and an encounter in the past few days. Yes, I've been kept up to date. Uh, thank you for your mission report. Of course. Captain, I'm going to be very direct with you so we don't have any miscommunication. I would appreciate that. The Genesis Project was a very dark period in the history of the Federation. I had it is down. highly classified. 
and that you discovered the space lab is quite miraculous. I only wish we had had more time to get the information that might have been held in there, mm-hmm. as well as examine the Genesis cave, which was on that planet. Believe me, as, as do I. As far as our scientists can tell, the planet Regula was blasted out of its orbit when the planet Genesis destroyed itself. I can't give you any more details than that. It was certainly considered to be destroyed at the time, but the fact that you found it is pretty, as I said, miraculous. Stranger things. Mm. Unfortunately, Captain, I have to wipe all mention of your exploits on Regula from your computer databanks, and you and your crew are hereby forbidden of forever bringing up Genesis ever again. May I ask a question? Of course. And again, I completely understand if if I'm not at the appropriate clearance level, but is there any danger, is there any threat of any of this information falling into the wrong hands? Always. We've remained vigilant for the past 70 years. Specifically about this project? That's correct. Is there anything, is there anything that we can do to help? Cooperating. Of course, you have it. Thank you, Captain. Okay. Is your doctor going to be a problem? No, but in the case of the life form that we encountered, I wanted to make a request. Yes? If you're confiscating the life form. We are. If you're destroying any evidence of this life form, I would like to formally request that Dr. Throla Shashiros is um, allowed to help you in any way if there's any further research that needs to be done. Part of our cooperation is that we also want to obviously share the research that we've been conducting over the past few days with the body of the life form. Uh, It was an incredible encounter, just strictly speaking from captain to vice admiral. It was miraculous, and we want to make sure that the gravity of that is it comes across before any of the, the it, before any of it is wiped away. Does that make sense? It does. I understand so your request. If, if there's any way, if there's any room, possibly for Doctor Shishiros to help you, again, I understand if there's if that that clearance level is impossible, but I have to formally make that request. Um, this was a very uh, uh, powerful contact, and it was obviously very impactful on my doctor and. It's, she will absolutely not be a problem, but if there's any other information that you can give that wouldn't put anybody at risk, anybody in danger, we would appreciate it and she would absolutely appreciate it. And again, like I said, we will be sharing our information over the research that we've done over the past few days, if it helps in any case. Well, Captain, I appreciate that. And I think you should tell your doctor and make sure that she knows that you were kind enough to make the request. I will be debriefing her personally. All of her research will be removed from the Sally Ride and immediately placed into a classified facility. And she will no longer be allowed to inquire or research any existence of this life form moving forward. And we will be removing all traces of it from the ship. Is there any way that she can informally, again, informally, just within your own records, remain on any kind of a waiting list? No. Or anything where there would be a possibility for her to help or further that research in any way at some point in the future absolutely not okay i had to try i'm sorry captain i know this is frustrating yeah it can be but like i said we plan to cooperate fully of course um just to give you an idea yeah and this is a bit above your pay grade if i may be so bold that's fine but i wanted to tell you captain that the genesis incident nearly sparked an interstellar war It was a device that was meant to expand our knowledge of terraforming, and it almost became the most terrifying thing the galaxy has ever seen. We must not ever, ever let anyone have any access to any of the data that may still be lingering out there. We are deeply fortunate that it was a Federation starship that came upon that moon. Hmm. We can't risk repeating the mistakes of the past, I understand. Yes. One last question. Mm-hmm. The freighter. Yeah. The Zhao. Yes. How much contact did the Zhao have with anything <laughs> with re- in regarding Project Genesis? I am happy to report 
absolutely none. The freighter was, according to my lieutenant commander, Talon, who was acting captain at the time that I wasn't on the ship, held back, stayed back, uh, instead of further uh, journeying into the, um, the pull of the black hole. I see. Uh, the freighter had absolutely no contact with any of the away team, myself included, had absolutely no contact with any of the information that was um, found about this lab the mm -hmm. little that we did find before we, again, were, were thankfully rescued and beamed back up to the ship. Excellent. And, and on our way back, we had immediately maximum warp headed to this very starbase. In fact, we were hoping to meet with the freighter because we had a, um, a bit of a bartering system where we were going to uh, uh, upgrade a few of their systems and give them a replicator or two. And that is the extent of their contact with this project or any of its intelligence. Very well, Captain. I take your word for that. Thank you. Admiral. Yes, Commander. I understand that for intelligence hygiene purposes and to ensure that this sort of information does not extend beyond Starfleet intelligence, that you would want as few people as possible outside of intelligence involved in it. And that does include us, hence the procedures that you're undertaking. Having said that, I understand that Dr. Shashiros has taken a particular interest. I know that it won't be possible so long as she's serving with us or in a similar capacity to have any involvement with this life form. If she does ever <laughs> consider transferring her priorities, it would be in fact better for operational security for her to be involved with Starfleet Intelligence and studying this life form. If at any point she would choose to do any xenobiological research with Starfleet Intelligence, I would like to recommend her for that position. You're recommending her for a position in intelligence to continue her research and studying the life form? Should she ever seek it, yes, sir. That will be up to me, and that will be up to Starfleet Command. We will make that assertion. However, we will take your recommendation into consideration. Thank you, Admiral. She'd be a hell of an asset, Vice Admiral. She, really she always would. is. Yeah. Noted. Thank you. Thank you for your cooperation. Once we've cleared the data from the data banks and we've retrieved all information and materials related to the Project Genesis from the USS Sally Ride, your crew will be free to disembark once you have made it clear to them that they are under orders to never mention that this mission ever happened. Yes, sir. Understood. Well then, I apologize for the cold greeting, but welcome home. Thank you, Admiral. You both have been asked to attend Commander Vidak's personal welcoming ceremony, as he put it. Yes, sir. He wishes to see you in his office at your nearest, earliest possible convenience. Thank you, sir. Welcome back and well done. Thank, Thank you. you. He turns and very, with clinical precision, just walks out. Mm -hmm. um, meanwhile, down in sick bay, they are... Don't touch that. That's very delicate. The captain walks over to you and says, Doctor. Hello. Sorry, who does? The captain, the guy with the rank of captain, oh, approaches you and says, Doctor Throllo <laughs> Yes, hello. Hello, it's a pleasure to meet Welcome you. Welcome to sick bay. I, I appreciate what you're doing, Doctor. This is your sick bay. <laughs> However, these men have clearance above the grade of your captain, and they can do whatever they want here. Okay? Not exactly. Please explain. I'm under no obligation to do that, Doctor. I'm going to let these men do what they need to do, and if you interfere, I'll have you thrown into a brig. Captain? You get <laughs> notified by the That's Doctor. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Martinez okay. here. Would you like to tell me why these men are tearing apart my sick bay? I would, yes. Um, I will meet you <coughs> in sick bay. I'll be there momentarily. Thanks very much. Mm -hmm. uh, by the time you get down there, they're finishing their work. Um, and they have basically downloaded all information and wiped any of your research that you've... Uh, to, the creature, by the way, down to the molecule is removed from your sick bay over the course of about 20 minutes. They are thorough. They wiped all of the Sally Ride's computers and everything. They, they, they basically, the, the people that come in, 
go into the they go into your computer database and they thoroughly remove all of the research all of the scan information, all of the data that you extracted from scanning this creature, from running tests on it, from discovering it, your tricorder is taken. Everything that came into contact with anything Mm -hmm. that had to do with this last mission, they are clinically precise at removing every piece of information. It's, you're surprised they didn't look under your pillow. But they they are thorough. Just real quick, just sidebar. I'm assuming that your tricorder is in your quarters. Is that correct? I, I was about to sidebar right now and say I deleted that. Oh, okay. I, gone. It's all up here. Okay. I did because I was trying to think like. Could I, I assumed put, that you were going to try to sneak that. Right. I but was then a, I thought mm, it's not going to be worth the risk because with the information that I got, I feel like it. Uh, you know, it's true. It's, you kind of had your questions answered. Yeah. So, so I couldn't scan crap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they can do everything um, on that tricorder. So throw low. You watch as they. You watch them remove in a case and a quarantine um, that's opaque. You can't see through it, but they remove the creature. They remove all of your research. They take data pads. They take everything. What's up? I I, uh, I have made my way now. I kind of sure. hung back to see where I was needed, if at all. And now I'm walking up to sick bay. I kind of linger at the door and just <laughs> watch what's happening quietly. Um, Chief Medical Officer's log, USS Sally Ride. For some reason, no one is able to explain to me my research has been interrupted and is being commandeered. (laughs) Despite my mission as part of Starfleet and some very important discoveries. You're in the room. The captain turns and says, Captain, is she a problem? No, not at all. Doctor? Captain? May I have a word? Just want to, like, position us okay. so that we, like, um, like, do the thing where we, like, turn our backs, you know, and I'm just kind of chatting start with leaving. Rolo. And as okay. they're walking out, uh, Talon, they move past you, and you hear them say, research facility is right there. And you see a few of them break off. Captain, what the hell are they doing? Okay. Okay. I'm sorry, Trello. I'm sorry. But they are taking everything and wiping everything. Like I don't I, understand. Like I tried to mention before, in the meeting where nothing left the room. The project that we found was incredibly classified and dangerous. I will try to fill in the information later, but we are- That's not classified, that's life. That's first no, contact. It's, it's, that is and seek it, out and it new may, life. And it may be more than that, and it may be dangerous. And I'll try to explain everything, but just for now, the USS Sally Ride, Ride is cooperating we are sharing all of our information and your research and I have put in the strongest word possible and so has Commander Rue with the Vice Admiral to potentially put you on this project to continue working on it further with Starfleet Intelligence and again this is the most classified project I've ever come across and I'm sorry to have to do this I'm so sorry but they're taking everything and they're wiping everything and we're cooperating and I will try to explain further. But just for now, we have to do this. We have to do this, this way. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What is our mission, sir? I don't know. Okay, are you gonna be okay? Is that relevant? Yes, it is. Myself and Commander Rue have to report to an, a commander on Starbase. If you want to remain on the ship, you can. If not, you are free to disembark. How do I fight this? We have to do it through the proper channels, and I will help you. And so will Commander Rue. But this might be a losing fight for now. This is Starfleet Intelligence, and this is something massive, Doctor massive. I I'm already sorry. lost it once. I know. I know. I know. We're going to do what we can and we're cooperating for now, but like I said, I will try to explain to you soon. So just let's just please a little bit of patience, but I understand and I'm sorry. Okay? I I I've, I've, I've got to go, but no, as of right now, sir. I know we're cooperating and thank you. Thank you, doctor. Okay. All right. The crew of the Sally Ride starts to disembark. Who is getting off? 
who's going to get some reprieve. You got a job to do, so Ren's staying on board with Jiv. Yeah. He's. <laughs> He either I'm gonna go down there. Right now you and Jiv are just crawling into the belly of the Sally Ride. <clears throat> um, who's disembarking? Obviously you two ceremony. have a meeting. All right, who else is disembarking? I Everybody? You as well? And Sage? Uh I don't really know what I would do. I I don't have anything to work on. I can't fly anywhere. So Sage is feeling kind of listless kind of useless and, and restless at the same time. Uh, I might just go and check in with with uh, other departments think they need an extra hand because you know me I just don't sit you just still. kind of wonder if you yeah, around a few of the decks and you're just like how, how long are we on starbase 138 like how you're long, not sure how long, have, how long have we been given this leave we don't know yet you're not entirely sure yet but you've been ordered to put, report to the commander's office did we hear back from captain Sarah Goldstein uh, uh, Talon would have informed you that, that that you guys had made contact and that she is proceeding towards the starbase. Cool. They're going to take a little longer. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's going to take the, it's gonna take them trail. close to a week to get here. <laughs> <laughs> you, wait, I, you know what I would do? What's that? Uh, actually, so I was in, in the transporter room. Is that when they said that they were going to wipe? The yeah, you heard all of it. Okay, so I did hear that. You heard uh, that part. I go to my quarters and just make sure, just okay. d- triple check my, my personal computer has okay. uh, no trace of anything that I've done. Sage, you, you move over to your order. personal computer of all of this. A lot of the crew is at this point, like, boop, boop. a lot of the crew is disembarking at this point, Sage, and as you move over to your personal computer, you immediately like bring up your web browser history, <laughs> yeah. trying to try and make sure that you were, trying to make sure that you weren't, uh, that you didn't leave well, any trace. I, I always I always cover my tracks, but I just want to make sure that I, I was very thorough. Okay. Just because it is Starfleet intelligence. You're searching through and looks like you've covered your tracks pretty well. Um, and as you're scrolling down, you see a file at the very bottom of the database that doesn't look like a data file that would, let me put it this way, it's not a file that you would open to find out where you've been searching, like a history right. cookie, sort of to speak. It's a, it looks like a data file that just says, please open me. At the very bottom. I open it. Oh, oh, oh. Right? You open it up. And it says, it, it, it's just a few lines of text, and it just says, Initia- uh, initiating. And then, period, period, yeah. period. And then it says, connection established. <gasps> and then you see text go across the screen go, Hello, Sage. I wondered how long it would take you to find this. That's what it says. That's it? And then there's a cursor blinking. It's almost like a chat channel has opened up. All right, I write, who is this and how did you access my personal files? There's hesitation, like it takes a minute. It almost like after you hit the enter, it's a long stretch before you hear anything else or like see anything else pop up on the screen. And it says, and it responds, I know who you're looking for. And then it says file incoming. Um, an image appears in front of you on the computer screen. Um, it looks like classified Federation documents like blurry surveillance photos. And this is something I haven't seen yet. No. This is way beyond. This is your parents wouldn't have access to this as mm. you're kind of flipping through it. Um, and you see these are probably about four, maybe five weeks old. Mm-hmm. Um, but you see a blurry picture, a few blurry pictures. And for a second, you're not sure what you're looking at. It looks like a bunch of people mm-hmm. like gathered around a corridor. And as you're, the pictures kind of flip by, um, they're kind of blurry, but you're starting to realize that there is one consistent thing about the pictures. The same woman is in every picture. And they get a little clear and a little blurry until the last picture, and you're able to make out a corridor. It looks like it was almost taken, angled up, like it was a sn- like somebody who snapped a picture. Mm-hmm when no one was looking and you see a Bajoran woman and she's just wearing civilian looking clothing 
and she looks remarkably familiar to you. It's my mother. I mean, I just know it's my mother. The the picture immediately vanishes after uh, after about three seconds. It just okay blacks out and says, "Can't leave any crumbs." Is that, is that just everything just disappears? Just the picture. Just the picture. But you still have connection. Okay, I write. Where is she? How do I find her? Where was this taken? <clears throat> um, a few moments pass and say. It finally it comes up and says, "Follow the Maquis." <sighs> You're very aware of mm-hmm. what that is. And then you see, in transmission, it just cuts off. It says, data link broken. I can, I, I'm looking, I'm, tr- I'm frantically looking, files, anything, trying to get the connection back and I can't find anything. No, in fact, when you leave that file and open it up again, it's empty. It's almost like the file wiped itself after the connection broke. And I know I'm not gonna get it back. And There's nothing to get. It's a shell of a file. There's nothing there. There's nothing there. Whoever did this has the ability to manipulate computers in a way that you can aspire to. <laughs> but this yeah. is some... The way out of my field. This, whoever my... did this, clearly, they have access to being able to hack onto the Sally Ride's computer system without being traced, and they've got, they've got their hand in Starfleet documents. And this is all happening as you're hearing the thud of security officers outside your quarter's door as they're going system to system to check for any traces of the search for Genesis. Mm -hmm. (coughs) Which, by the way, you are clear. Mm -hmm. I, uh... But you, in your, burned into your mind is the image of a woman that Mm -hmm. you just saw for the first time in your life, knowing fully who she was. Mm Mm-hmm. I, I don't have, like any solid memories, but I just knew immediately her face. And I reach down and I take the piece of earring that I have that I wear around my ankle under my uniform and just hold it and just kind of sit in the dark in my quarters. Okay. That's what I do. Disembarking from the Sally Ride Talon as a lot of the crew are funneling out of the corridor, as you're moving through, kind of troubled by everything you've kind of, you've witnessed in the past half hour, um, you, you're kind of jolted because as you're as you're moving through the crowd of people as they're walking through, um, you glance up, and about um, about twenty feet away, at the head of the procession of people that are. <laughs> that are moving out of the Sally Ride, you see a very handsome Betazoid ambassador Ambassador who Bale. is doing this. Oh, oh what's up? Hashtag what's up, bro? He looks like he's trying to play it off. <laughs> but he's watching Sally Ride personnel walk by and he's just kind of He hasn't spotted you. You've spotted him. That's great. Hashtag agreeable. Oh, I angle my way towards him. Yeah, um, it's logical. <laughs> Somebody you know, you're going to say hi, it's logical. It is logical. It is logical. I recognize his face. Yeah. He, apparently, even though he doesn't spot you, his betazoid blood, he, you see he's kind of looking in another direction, and then he just goes and turns and looks mm-hmm. right at you as you approach. Mm-hmm. Um, and you see his, he's not very subtle. Like, as you approach, he kind of overplays it a little bit. Like, you see his posture shift, and he tries to, he makes a valiant attempt to look very, ah, professional as you approach. And he says, ah, Commander. Ambassador Rell. It's a pleasure to run into you here. <laughs> Trying you, to role play. <laughs> you look well. Oh? As do you. The As star base looks very different than last time I was here. Yes, uh, they've managed to actually 
see to it that this place doesn't fall apart while we're all living on it. Not that it would literally do that, obviously, and that's a poor attempt at humor on my part. <clears throat> I understood the subtext of that. Ah, yes. Well, they, but yes, to, to, to speak to what you were saying, they have managed to put things, um, you know, back together around here. Um, how is the Sally ride? The Sally ride is functioning. <laughs> I'm sure Starfleet will be pleased to hear that. Yes. We have been... We have experienced adventures that I did not expect being assigned to this science vessel. Is that... That's good, though, right? That's why most people join Starfleet. I mean, not that's, that's obviously not why a Vulcan would join Starfleet, but it must be at least intellectually stimulating to be running into the unexpected. I start walking, not really, you know, I start walking, like, suggesting that we walk together. And yeah. starts walking with you. Mm -hmm. Away you from the crowd. Walk and talk, <laughs> mm -hmm. walk and talk. Mm -hmm. thank you. Mm -hmm. Technical term, walk and talk. Um, okay. Perhaps. Perhaps that is what many officers expect, to experience adventures that they never would have imagined otherwise. I believe I also had that expectation, but I will say that my commission so far has, has been more unexpected than even I was expecting. Hmm. Well, you just disembarked. I don't, uh, I don't want to hold you up, but... I have nowhere to be. We... I do not want to inconvenience you. No, no, uh, no, I, no. Um, it's, you know, it's, 138 is a pretty nice star base, but there's not a lot of people to be an ambassador to out here. <laughs> Funny story, um, our Ferengi friend is here. He's ah. been kept in the brig for the past two months as the Ferengi government has completely disavowed him. Kalak. Kalak is still enjoying his time in a Starfleet holding cell. They're not sure what to do with him just yet. Funny story. Um, I'd be happy to catch you up if you would perhaps like to get dinner. That would be agreeable. I have not had a, an adequate meal in quite some time. You'll be happy to hear that they actually have working replicators here now. And from what I understand, um, it, pomeek soup? Yes. Yes, they have pomeek soup now. I I've was, never had any. I was looking forward to potentially having some plomeek soup. Plomeek soup. Yes, that is the pronunciation, plomeek. plomeek soup. Your pronunciation is fairly good. Thank you. I've been studying a lot of Vulcan uh, for ambassador reasons, obviously. For, for diplomatic reasons. Yes, of course. Uh, this way. And the two of you walk down the corridor towards the galley of Starbase 138. <laughs> Hashtag ambassador reasons. <laughs> um, <laughs> We are going to We're going to cut to um before we get back to what's going on in the in the in the thing. De squeal. De squeal. De squeal. De squeal. This game is real rough on the like ups and downs. Oh, I'm sure I can take this. Crying one minute. Yeah. It's Squeeze in the next. Um, it missed you all the time. Yeah. And then Ambassador Rail's thirsty. <laughs> Get ready for some. Not to kill me too. I feel bad because I'm about to dump mm. ice on this whole scenario. <laughs> um, so walking in to the, you walk past the secretary who tells you to go ahead and proceed inside the commander's quarters. As you walk inside, you see the commander who's standing next to his desk. Um, he turns and faces all of you. Um, he's not alone. Um, as you walk inside, uh, he's facing the window. He pivots and turns, and you 
It's Admiral Nash standing right behind the desk. Um, Wait, I'm sorry. Just a clarification. Yeah, What's his Norval first name? Nash. Is it Norval or Norwell? Norwell. No, it's, I think it's. I was told I think it was Norwell on the internet. By, is it? By I think it's Norvell. I checked my notes. Norval Nash. Nor- I Nor- Norwell. Episode. It's Norwell. Norwell. Is it Norwell Nash? N O R. Norwell Nash. W E L L. Is it? Norwell. Yes, call. we're gonna say Norwell Nash because. Nor- I think Admiral Norwell Nash. Admiral Norwell Nash. <laughs> um, How many times? Bro? I'm trying to get you some of those spots with pencils. I'm trying to get you some of those to some of those um, fancy ones. So yes, the admiral fun- the admiral is stationed at Starbase One. Mm-hmm. He's come a long way. You're not sure why he's here, but it's a bit of a shock to see him standing there next to the commander, and even more so. The commander sees you both walk in, and he nods to the admiral and says, well, the Vulcan turns and says, I will be outside, and walks past you, leaving both of you alone. The two of you kind of feel ambushed right now as he walks out, and the door goes shh, and Nash is holding a data pad. He's always holding a damn data pad. It always seems like he's got some kind of judgmental look on his face. And as the two of you stand there, he says, okay, you can be at ease now. Good to see you, Admiral. Good to see you, Captain, Commander. Admiral. (sighs) Do you all want to have a seat for this? Sure. I sit down. Okay. Commander, what do you do? If if and when the Admiral sits down, I will also sit down. Okay. He doesn't. (laughs) He leans up against the chair and he says, There's a lot to unpack from your mission reports. I, uh, I've been following the Sally ride pretty closely, Captain. I didn't get a chance to tell you this before you all left Space Dock, but the Sally ride is a personal project of mine. Your missions are important to me, and I scrutinize you and your crew not to be a pain, but because how much do you know about what has happened in the past 72 hours? And I don't mean with your mission that Starfleet Intelligence will not let me look at. (laughs) I mean... You mean outside of that? Yeah. Um, I'm not at all familiar. We've been at warp and we've been on our way here. What's going on? There was a coup attempt on Earth. One of our own tried to... (laughs) One of our own tried to stage a coup d'etat against the Federation president. San Francisco's streets were filled with security officers keeping people under tight guard, to say the least. The whole place was put under martial law. I can't give you too many details because Starfleet security is being very tight-lipped about it. Well, what can you say? What happened? Only that my suspicions about where Starfleet is going right now are proving correct. And what are those suspicions, Admiral? Captain, no one's saying it, but there is nobody who wears these, these pips in the brass that doesn't believe for one second that a war is coming with the Dominion. It is absolutely coming. It's a matter of when at this point. We have been trying to anticipate their moves. And it has caused a lot of paranoia back on Earth. And one of us decided to seize on that paranoia and stage a terrorist attack. In the light of the Antwerp conference, it didn't take much to set that in motion. Was there any loss of life? No loss of life, thankfully. At least none that they're telling me about. But an admiral, one of our vice admirals, is now currently in prison. Who put a stop to it? 
Captain Benjamin Sisko, who was here from Deep Space Nine. Yeah. Good. Apparently he headed it up, managed to head it off, save the Federation president. Well, he's the closest to the threat, potentially, and he's... He, he, now there's a, a, a the Klingon, right? Uh, Klingons is, are still a bit of a problem. Yeah. There's a lot to go over. And I'll get to all that in a minute. Let's... Let's get to these mission reports real quick. Now, I've read everybody's report as quickly as I could. I think you all did the best you could, given the circumstances. Thank you. Captain, I'd like to speak to your first officer alone. Certainly. I'll be right outside if you need me. And Captain, I saw that you made a request to keep that piece of the Enterprise with you on board the ship. I may have pulled some strings. Just a paperweight. That's all I was asking for. Something for my desk, you know. I don't think anyone's going to miss a quarter centimeter of steel. I think it'll be fine. Thank you, Admiral. Thank you. Let me know if you need me for anything. <clears throat> I'll be right outside. You're hoping he wasn't being literal. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Nash, Nash does kind of try to talk like a cowboy, so to speak, sometimes. Got it. Um, we we're so over here being like, like wow. Yeah. We found that? He doesn't really know measurements very well. <laughs> I don't know measurements too well. I'm just an admiral in Starfleet. <laughs> um, so you walk out and you find yourself alone with Nash. Um, Nash is quiet for a minute. And uh, he... It looks like, <laughs> it almost looks like he's got indigestion for a moment. He just kind of sits there and he looks like he's trying to work through it. And then he turns and says, Commander, I've been doing this my entire life. About 43 years now I've served in Starfleet as an admiral. I'm an old man. I'm good at what I do. It's how I got where I got. I'm good at judging personnel and I'm good at judging people. If I recall, I opposed your assignment on the USS Sally Ride. Yes, Admiral. I thought your request to serve on board that starship was arrogant, prideful, and selfish. I thought you were doing it because you were just trying to work through something. I thought you were treating Starfleet like your therapy. It offended me, and I did everything I could to stop it. Yes, Admiral. I'm glad I was stopped. Sir? It's possible, Commander, that I owe you an apology. I've been looking over these mission reports. I've been reading up about your service record at the Battle of Wolf. And so, I'm going to do you a favor. I'm going to have a chat with you, officer to officer, instead of tearing you a new one like you deserve. Sir? Janiel, I noticed bo both you and the doctor left out certain incidents on your mission reports that Captain Martinez did not. He was thorough and he was unjudgmental, and he told it like it was. It is a credit to the two of you, both the doctor and yourself, that you didn't rat each other out for your behavior on a crash shuttle craft in an emergency situation. I want to clear something up for you, Commander. You consent to medical examination the moment you put on that uniform. If you got a problem with the doctor, then you work it out with your captain. I'm not going to reprimand you, but any other admiral would. Sir, I believe it was worked out with the captain. I'm glad to hear that. <sighs> Can I ask you... I want to ask you something, Janiel. I want to know what the point 
of defending who we are today if we cannot protect tomorrow. Sir? There was a coup attempt. (laughs) Starfleet is in the middle of an identity crisis right now, Commander. She can't decide if she wants to be a military or the exploratory peacekeeping force that she has always been. And the Dominion is trying to force our hand into making a decision. And I, for one, will not see this fleet become a military. Ever. There are a lot of people that want to take the Sally ride and put her somewhere strategic. And I have been playing interference on behalf of you and your crew. That's a conversation I'm going to have with your captain. Anyway. Sir, if I may. Yeah, of course. Speak your mind, Commander. There are many scientists aboard the Sally Ride. Engineers, doctors, biologists. I'm a soldier. There is no shame in Starfleet being a military. It does not make Starfleet any lesser for it to be a military, sir, because we have an obligation to the citizens, the civilians of our Federation as you say, to protect them. Someone must. We are the shield. And to deny that is to deny what I believe is fundamentally a point of pride. Janiel, I feel like maybe you're getting defense force and peacekeepers confused with what a military is. We do not use Starfleet to advance our political or social agendas upon other species in the galaxy. We do not conquer other territories, and we will not push our agenda on other races unless they decide they want to join the Federation. We are a peacekeeping force. First and foremost, we are not a military, and we will never be a military so long as I wear these pips. Now, you can take pride in being a soldier, Commander. I think you would have made a fine Mako officer when Mako was still around. And we need tactical minds like yours, like Benjamin Sisko, who was able to thwart an attempt on the president's life and his legitimacy as the rightfully elected leader of the United Federation of Planets. We need you. That's for damn sure. Starfleet was made to be an exploratory force. This whole organization was built so we could explore the galaxy to seek out the unknown. There have been too many instances in the history of my world that has used fear to turn those in power against its citizens and the citizens against each other. And just because we are now hundreds of years past all that does not mean it cannot come back. You're right, Janiel, we are the shield, but we're not protecting our citizens from violence. We're trying to preserve what it is we stand for. I have a report right here that says that the current rate of ship construction based off of hostilities in the Alpha Quadrant, that the Intrepid class could be the last science vessel that Starfleet ever builds for the next 60 years. What are we defending? What are we defending after that? Sir, I wasn't aware that we had produced precognition capable people. Well, that's what strategy and tactics is, isn't it, Commander? It's been able to see 300 moves ahead, so to speak. No one foresaw the Dominion. No one can foresee 60 years. I think the point is, Commander, that at the rate we're at right now, we are in danger of losing who we are. No, sir. All due respect. I have seen a fine science vessel that can do both. That the moment that we 
worry and become insecure that our identity as a federation is in jeopardy is the moment that we have conceded that it is even possible and I do not allow for that assumption. If we are to keep ourselves as an exploratory force, we can be that and protect our people and be what the Federation was always meant to be, what Starfleet was always meant to be, even as we protect any who might encroach upon it. We are not going to lose ourselves, not from a war that's coming, not from anything. It sounds like you and I are actually agreeing, but saying, the dif saying it differently. <laughs> but I'll just tell you this, Commander. I really do appreciate your <clears throat> insight on this. But I'm speaking to you as someone who is watching ship production, who is in on meetings with the other admirals, and who's receiving intelligence reports and requests across the, across the quadrant. And I'm telling you right now, Commander, we're going to be prepared for today. But I can't promise that we have what we're fighting for tomorrow. I'm not going to get into an existential debate about this. I appreciate your attitude and your candor. Sir. But let's just leave it at this. I know it's things you don't yet. Just keep protecting the Sally right. Always. Well then carry on. Yes, Admiral. Yes. Something else, Commander? Admirals have no obligation to apologize to commanders, as you said before. Wherever you're going with the commander, I don't want to hear it. So you're dismissed. One. Sir. You turn and walk out. I am dismissed. Okay. You see the Admiral more troubled than you've ever seen him. Um, he's dismissing you. He looked away like he didn't want to make eye contact with you when you were acknowledging what, what you were about to say, where you were going with that. It's almost like he was like, no, no, don't. No, no. You know, like he had that sort of reaction, um, even though he was brisk with you. But it, as, as you walk out, um, you're left to process <laughs> the conversation you just had with them. Um, so we'll go ahead and do this. We're going to speed it up here a little bit. There's a meeting, a dinner is had. Um, you two managed to catch up. Um, uh, it ends as it did last time with the two of you wishing each other well. Mm -hmm. um, Hopefully, okay. although you were being called back to Starbase 138, so you'll probably be back here again soon, you suspect. Um, Captain, you are receiving orders. Your orders are waiting for you back on the USS Sally Ride. Mm -hmm. um, everyone is congregating back towards the ship. And then while all this is going on, um, you two are still in the guts of the Sally Ride, trying to figure out what the source of some of these power surges are that are taking place inside the <laughs> Jeffries tubes. Um, while y'all are working, Jiv just lets slip. He's like, I'm not going to retire. <laughs> He's just, don't, don't do that. Just do what? Don't do that. And don't tell anybody it was happening either. I already told Starfleet it's done. It's fine. Nash said I could stick around. He's still a jackass, though. <laughs> Turns that off. I'm going to ask the captain if I can put you on the bridge, though, at ops station. I wait off to keep juggling two jobs. Does that sound all right to you? Uh, Good. I'll let him know. <laughs> <laughs> Here, follow me down deeper into this corridor. This is going to be a long job. <coughs> and he just starts going down. Yes, you'll be on senior staff. Take a breath. And he moves down the corridor. <laughs> Um, <laughs> all right, so we're going to get back to you in a second. Um, yeah. So two things happen now. Um, the first thing is Sally Ride receives orders to report 
this is not what you were expecting, Commander or Captain. Um, the USS Sally Ride has been ordered to the Shackleton Expanse. Didn't think that was going to happen. <laughs> Did not think that was going to happen. The Shackleton Expanse. By way of Starbase three six four. Okay. Narendra Station. And for those of you who are familiar with Star Trek Adventures at Home, that is the that is the uh, the setting in which Star Trek Adventures actually is focused on during the playtest. Shackleton Expanse is a huge expanse yeah. of space. And what was Named after s- Earth's Antarctic explorer, the Ernest Shackleton, the Shackleton Expanse is located well away from the heart of the Federation space and beyond the borders of both the Klingon and Romulan empires. It's an expanse uh, it's shrouded in mystery, even legend, and largely uncharted, save for the eff- efforts of automated survey probes. This is a huge chunk of unexplored space. You said we're, we're meeting where? Something 364? You're going to be headed to, you were ordered to Starbla- Starbase 364, Narendra Station. Norendro? Yes. This is a long ways away. A long ways away. And the order is coming straight from Admiral Nash. And okay. Rue, if you didn't know any better, given the context of the conversation you had with Nash, it's almost like he's taking Sally right off the chessboard and yeah. putting her as far away as yeah. possible. Definitely. That's what's happening. Because tensions are heightening right now. And he has taken his science vessel off the board. Do we and have send time? y'all into what's that? But like near the Klingons and Romulans. Pass you it. guys, you guys are past. Right. You guys I'll remember? Have to pass them. And what, remember mm. three dimensional space. You guys are yeah. the Shackleton Expanse. Dip under and go like that. Yeah. Basically, the Shackleton <laughs> Expanse is, uh, is just beyond the borders of both <laughs> cool. Federation space, but it's out in the middle of nowhere. It's one of the farthest time? areas that uh, Starbase is located, and it's a good, like. This is like prime real estate for exploration in the unknown. <gasps> there's science there? Yeah, there's it's science. all it's science. exploration. It's, it's all science? Yes. Oh, too long. There's science everywhere. <laughs> do we have time That's to wait true. a week for uh, Captain Sarah Goldstein to show up with her junk junker? Oh. Or do we have to leave right now? No, we're going to, because I'm, I'm wrapping it up right now. Yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah. 1239. I've given so. them instructions. What's on, that? I've given them instructions at Starbase on how to. Yes. So she'll get hooked so, up. We don't have to be there. Cool. So here are the last two scenes we have for our season finale. Um, upon receiving orders to the Shackleton Expanse, the Sally Ride pulls out of space dock, um, and you leave Starbase 138 behind, probably longer than just a couple of weeks, Talon. Um, this mission will probably take at least six months in deep space exploration. Um, six months. So you got, you're going deep space exploring. Um, Rue, returning to your quarters after this unusual meeting, um, processing everything the Admiral said, kind of <laughs> not agreeing with him, not seeing eye to eye as usual with Nash. Um, your, sh- your shift is getting close to coming to an end, so as you make your way over to um, the sink, the area, you're kind of splashing water in your face, doing your thing. Um, Ru, as you rub your face and look into the mirror, there's a man staring back at you. Um, it happens like this. It just, it's not you, it's a man. He's dressed in all black and he's staring back at you with cold eyes. And it's abrupt. And when you blink, it's gone. But it was there. It was absolutely there. For a split second, there was a man staring back at you in the mirror, looking right at you. And a chill immediately lances through your spine that you can't explain. Your breath kind of catches instinctively when you see it. You're almost certain it was a trill. I'm going to go to sick bay. You go to sick bay? <laughs> you go to sick bay. Um, a few moments pass and the doors open, and Throlo, you see something you did not expect to see as you're putting your sick bay back together from just a few days ago when it was torn apart. Um, you look up as Matazi is taking his hand, he's patting you on the shoulder, and he's like, It'll be all right, Doctor. It'll be. And he kind of, you see his cat ears, the, the Cation ears just kind of go up, and his eyes widen, and you turn and look, and you see Throlo with this, or you see uh, Rue with this expression on their face, standing in the doorway of Sick Bay, looking like they've seen a ghost. Commander Rue. Doctor, please 
perform a neural scan to to rule out hallucinations. Um, Absolutely. Something. Come on in. I... All right. You two make your way over to the medical bed. We're going to cut back to you guys once again. Day two. Um, you're making banter with Jiv, mm -hmm. who's on his back a few a few meters oh, away. Oh, hello. Didn't expect to see you this morning. Yeah. Mm. He's just making some kind of wise crack about the work boots that he constantly has to put on. He has to replicate new work boots all the time, even to, like because he's of all the like crawling around and like work that he does on some of the catwalks here and moaning and complaining about how how uncomfortable it is. Um, you're yeah. scanning to find the source of this power disruption, and you hear a beep 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 coming from your tricorder, like you found something. Um, is that a commander? Yeah. What is it? Got some beeps. Just pull the panel open and take a look. Got some peace. All right, you're just like, set it down. Yep. You pull the panel off, and as you pull it aside, you don't know what it is you're seeing because you weren't privy to it when it was happened, but as you pull it aside, you kind of, what? And you see one of the bioneural packs that the Intrepid class uses to enhance the computer speed. Mm -hmm. And there, attached to one of these bioneural packs, it looks like a leaf. <gasps> a green <laughs> leaf <laughs> that has just started to unfold and is growing out of the side of the power conduit. Sir? And that's where we have to stop. Oh, no! Thank you again to the crew. Um, this was our last time going late, guys. So this is our last late Wednesday night game. So thanks for sticking around with us. Um, we're going to go ahead and jump away now so everyone can go home and get some rest. We will catch you guys Monday night, 7 p.m. here on Geek and Sundry Twitch. So tune in. We're going to be at a reasonable time for us here in the United States. Um, to everybody else, uh, live long and prosper. Thank you so much for tuning in. And hailing frequencies are closed. Thanks for tuning in to Shield of Tomorrow. If you enjoyed this, be sure to like and subscribe for more videos. We'll be here every week with the ongoing adventures of the USS Sally Ride. New episodes air on Geek and Sundry Twitch and Alpha every Friday from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. If you'd like to see more, you can start your free 30-day trial on projectalpha.com. Yeah.